last time. Conscript Group 14 found themselves within a chapel in the middle of the Grand Cemetery of Elturel. They had come following the trail of Uldar Ravengard, the Grand Duke of Baldur's Gate, who had been seeking an artifact to aid the beleaguered people of Elturel, trapped in their city as it was slowly being pulled down to the surface of Avernus. They met a strange and powerful figure named Gideon Lightlord, a former priest of Lathander, now an undead servant of Zarion, dedicated to protecting Elturel from demons and the chaos they represent. He allowed the adventurers to descend into the ossuary under the chapel, warning them not to trust anyone they encountered. Below, they discovered a small gallery of paintings which seemed to tell the story of Zariel's attack on the Nine Hells, events that culminated in her fall from Celestia and ascendancy to Archduke of Avernus. Rhea Mantlemorn, the Hellrider, disputed what was seen, holding to the history that she had been told. Zariel was defeated by the forces of Hell, but rather than accept her death, she chose to become a devil herself. Her army of mortals was forced to withdraw back to the Prime Material Plane. The frescoes that Conscript Group 14 discovered seemed to tell a different story. Exploring further, they discovered a meditation pool in the middle of which knelt Grand Duke Ravengard. Around him lay the bottles, the bottles, around him lay the bodies of his retinue, slain with, while defending him against demonic forces streaming from a nearby magic portal. They met an extremely overstressed tabaxi named Locke, who claimed to be all that remained of the Duke's men. The Duke was wearing a helm that seemed to be the artifact that he had been seeking, although it had been corrupted by a demonic force. Two entities were speaking through the Duke, one benevolent, the other bent on destruction. After defeating a group of minotaurs that stepped from the portal, the adventurers began their withdrawal, seeking a way to safely remove the helm from the head of Duke Ravengard and close the portal. Conscript Group 14, what do you do? We're all pretty they, banged uh, up, yeah? Yes. No, yes. Yes, we are. Yes! Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yes, is, no. Yes. yes. Uh, is the Duke, because uh, I know I transported him there. Um, I, I try and, like, move him a couple steps. Like, does he resist just guiding he is stunned. His legs, as you help him stand, he stays standing for a few seconds. And as you push him, he does stumble a step or two in the direction that you move him. But when you let him go, after a few moments, he collapses down into a kneeling position the same way he was when you found him. But if I wanted to take him some distance, I get the sense that I could get him to walk himself. I wouldn't have you to You do him. get that sense. Okay. Um, Balkran, you got any heals for us? Well, I could certainly muster up some some clerical uh, um, errors here. Let's see if we can't. I, I, I might be able to help a, a little bit with that. Um, I don't think I can do it with everybody, but uh, um, I, I mean, if you, if you just need a, a quick break, I can definitely make a quick break for a few people. I appreciate that, uh, friend, but you have aided us greatly, and I believe I can. Uh, so, so who who is in need of aid? As I look around the party, uh, how how worse for the wear are we looking, oh friends of mine? Typhon's got a big minotaur gash on his yeah, arm. Yeah, not looking so awesome. Oh, I've got hunger pains. <laughs> <laughs> Typhon, you, you took think? a very, oh. very deep gash. You almost fell, did you not, Typhon? Close, I would say. Perhaps within inches, but... Well, not today. Falkrin, if you need to heal someone, then there's your man. No, abs absolutely. I myself could also use some healing, but just trying to figure out... Anyone else is in need. 
Do you think yes. healing the Duke? What? Oh, sorry. I'm just also in need. But, if that's not but, clear. Oh. Well, well, whatever we do, we, we should probably do it <laughs> kind of fast. Um, th- they keep coming, you understand? Have you Lock, got more of them biscuits? You have. No, no. I'm going to say. Locke, if you have the ability to heal, perhaps you should heal him. And who? The, the, the wizard? The duke. Oh, the duke. Um, well, I've been, I've been trying. I mean, he doesn't seem to be... I mean, he hasn't really eaten or drunk anything in days, but other than that, he's been fine. Um, but I'm worried. I can't imagine he's he's got much longer, longer left. Perhaps if we did get him back up to the surface, back up to the portion of the temple, which was notably safer. It seemed to be holding some vestiges of uh, consecration, even here in hell. Uh, well, uh, is that guy up there still? I'm saying, if you can... The tall one with the red eyes and the long fingers. He was really creepy. I, um... <clears throat> if I, you can... I did not get a good uh, feeling about him. Yeah, he's up there, but... No, no, he he's... He's going to be really mad when he finds out Falcon took his book. Yeah, uh, you... I think I think he'll be more upset when he discovers that the Duke is not indeed dead, but currently in possession of a relic. But uh, if we can spare the if we can spare the time, I could do a prayer of healing for uh, at least uh, uh, more than a few of you. How long does that take? I need uh, ten minutes. All right. Well. It usually takes a bit longer than that for other <laughs> things to come through the um, through the portal. So uh, we should be all right, maybe for ten minutes. No, well, let's let's hope the gods are kind. All right. So um, can I? Uh... All right, friends. So I'll go. Hey. Oh, there we go. So oh, nice. Okay, so that is going to be. Yeah, you know, I'm mathing, so this is going to take a little bit longer than usual. So this is 14 plus my four is 18 heals to up to six individuals. Wow. So, uh, and then uh, add on to that. Is that your disciple of life as well? Uh, so that's that's what I'm figuring out because it's my mo- so that's my modifier with the heals, and then disciple of life also lets me add. Oh, what is the bonus to the? Uh, Oh yeah, so plus the so two plus the spells level, so that's an additional four. So that's twenty-two healing wow, to fantastic. up to six individuals in the party. So uh, six of you may have twenty-two hit points back. Um, and just so, uh, everybody watching, uh, just so you know, um, our friend Falcon here has to uh, has to deal with the game a little bit on the old-fashioned way. Uh, some of the equipment is on loan to other people. So. Oh, using wow. paper. oh what is are those that? character are sheets from the armory <laughs> those are like those are like grandpa and grandma's D D character <laughs> sheets uh, uh, uh-huh, Jax, uh-huh. you had something yeah i wanted to see i'm gonna check out the duke and the helmet and see if i can maybe a disabled device hmm. okay make an investigation check so you're doing this while Falkrin is using her um yeah. doing her prayer of healing oh, let me have a look hmm. Uh, 24. Yes, well, the Duke continues to... You know, uh, different personalities coming through his whispers and his speaking. Um, and Slap him every time his hands keep reaching up, sort of... Um, sort of... Uh, um, I can't, remember, can't think of the word, but, but despite himself, he keeps reaching up and putting his hands like as if he's trying to take it off, but the, the uh, helmet is not moving at all. It is It appears to be completely affixed to his head. Uh, every time he speaks a weird language, I sort of give him a slap around the face while I'm trying to work. Not hard, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Just, now stop it! <laughs> and then, uh, all right. Oh, this is going to take some work. So I pull out a crowbar. No, 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 no. Okay, not the crowbar. Not the wisest not the crowbar. idea. I mean, we really, we really tried really hard to get that off of you. Understand? I mean, the first thing that we tried to do, and the harder we tried, the more it seemed to hurt him. So, we did you have a goblin? Uh, no, we didn't have a goblin. Okay. Do I do I think I can disable devices? 
it depends on how intelligent uh, Jax is. For a goblin, very. It We're doesn't. Uh, there doesn't oh, appear yeah. to be any device-like uh, part of this that will allow you to um, find a way to do what is here. It's just a helmet. There's no lever. There's no button. Jax, this seems to be a curse. Something some foul magic and it is beyond my ability to dispel we need to find someone so we should get him Ivan, didn't you Absolutely say you knew somebody okay. we've met someone yes uh, who might that be well she was back in the crypts she's the one barely keeping it all together with a glass mace and a book full of cursed names oh I remember her she doesn't like me very much I believe her name is. I wonder Daria. why. Say that again, pussy cat. <laughs> if we're going to utilize her assistance, I recommend we get there as soon as possible. Is it worth asking our friend upstairs if he would like to keep the helmet on property and maybe he could help us, or should we try and sneak by? If I because remember correctly, I think, think his remedy. I think. Yeah, I think his remedy would be to quickly sever the Duke's head from his body and just remove the helmet. He might want to kill us when he finds out you stole his I, I agree uh, I, I would be careful in trusting this thing. And Remember, his he seems to be, well, <laughs> hell-bent on a single purpose, of protecting this place and destroying demons. As long as we don't interfere with his Did mission just that, a joke? I think we'll be fine. What can I say? Well, if we need to get him out undetected, I believe I might be able to assist with that. And she uh, uh, approaches uh, she approaches the Duke and says, I can make him invisible for a short time if we want to escape unseen. Doesn't sound like a bad idea. Somebody's going to need to hold on to him, though. And where would we go, exactly? Back I imagine... to... The cathedral, yes? Yeah. Oh, we haven't checked out that secret door. Oh. No, oh, no, there's there's nothing back there. I, I explored while uh, while there was the fighting. I was looking around for something to help. And oh, while it you was looks like there was a tunnel there. One, there's a tunnel there at one point, but it... Uh, it's collapsed. There's the, the invisibility will help, of course, but what of the babbling? The and, and of course, there's that. And he points up and you see the... Um, sort of black, dark light lightning that is coming from around the corner and seems to be following wherever the Duke goes. Can't you turn That's it off, point. Typhon? You're a wizard. I don't believe so, at least not to my estimation and the estimation of this one, Beauregard here. There was someone back in the large group, um, a man I had met. He seemed to know something about um, deals. Oh, well, that's... <laughs> Hmm, yeah, it's definitely the deals are from what I've read and what I've I've heard that, that deals are definitely a very important part of of how things are done down here. Um, he said he had been mostly able to avoid them. To me, that makes him an expert. Hmm. Well, expert or not, um, I really have to to press upon you. They keep coming. You understand? It's not like a fight and then it's done. They they continue, and we're. We might be approaching the time when they come again, and I would very much now like to be gone from here. Uh, let us go, then. <sighs> Does anybody have anything else they wish to do or say while they are down here? Uh, unless there is a, like, a outside force that stops me, I've got my arm on the Duke leading him. Um, there is no outside force that stops you. I just mean, like, as we continue. Got it. Um, he is only capable of moving at half speed. Um, so if the group stays with him, then the group is moving at half speed. 
but you exit the ossuary. Heading back past all of the bones, you see disappearing around a corner the flying flayed skin and as uh, you see it, uh, lock shudders. Oh, that thing really creeps me out. Um, you go back to the um, embalming room that is still uh, filled with chemical smells and uh, broken glass and such things and begin your way up the steps. As you emerge from the ossuary, you immediately sense that something has changed. The violet glow emanating from the chapel seems to have grown in intensity and the pulsing energy makes the hair on your arms shiver. You can hear and see movement from beyond the shattered stained glass. And standing in the doorway is Gideon Lightward, his face a menacing glower. You have returned, and you have brought the anchor with you. I'm surprised that you did not kill it. But no matter, hand it over. I must save Elturel from the chaos of the Abyssal Hordes. Be happy to hand the helmet over, but not the Duke. They are one and the same. No, I've known him a long time. He's not usually had the helmet. Hmm. Yes, but when he put it on his head, it allowed the corrupting force of the abyss, a foothold in this place, and it goes stronger with every breath he takes. Are you saying that Gideon, his do donning that helmet is what brought Elsrel here? No, his donning that helmet is what has allowed the demons to come in to the bottom of this place. And if it is not destroyed, they will overwhelm Elsrel. We have every intention of removing this helmet from him as quickly as possible. And we, in fact, have a plan for accomplishing that. And what's more, if he lives, he's a great man who cares for this city. I'm sure he would be a worthy ally to protect the remnants of Elturel itself. Make a persuasion check at disadvantage, please. Oh, disadvantage. I could give him inspiration. Would that take away the disadvantage, at least? It would make it a normal roll. I think I'm going to do that. I would do it. Okay. I have lost inspiration. Come on, double ones. Just so hungry. Okay, 15. Unacceptable. Dang it. You have one minute to turn over this thing. You have less than that to get out of our way or die. And that's an intimidation check, if I could. <laughs> Very well. Uh, is that at uh, any advantage, disadvantage, before I click the button? Um, not that. That's, that's just regular intimidation. Trying to convince him of something that he profoundly doesn't believe, that's a disadvantage. Intimidation. 26. Something about the way you say it gives him pause, and he raises an eyebrow and nods. Jack shits himself. Have it your way. And he snaps his fingers, and you see roiling behind him a mass of zombies that has been growing ever since you went down into the ossuary and they begin to move forward with a groan. My friends, please place yourself on the board and we will roll initiative. So the intimidation did not work? <laughs> he was gonna give you a minute. You convinced him you were a big enough threat that he won't. Good job. <laughs> Now I can see lock, so we're dragging our icons over. Yes. Just place can yourself somebody, where you think, Can somebody drag Falkrin? <laughs> oh yeah. Place yourself where you think they will be, where you would be. Falkrin, where would you like to be? 
Falkren. I had muted myself. I apologize. Uh, I would like to be uh, right, yeah, right next to Silas would be fantastic. Right next to Silas, very well. I am impless, but you are impless. Uh, would you like to be imped? <laughs> Please. I'm not sure I like the implication <laughs> of that. <laughs> da, 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 da. All right. There is an imp. I'm just glad you didn't let Ryan and have it a go should now it be. If he did. Yep. You got it. Cool. I'm assuming direct control. Assuming control. Um, excellent. Um, well then, we will now roll initiative. Look at you, Sam. Oh, I broke so bad the all past like four sessions. Hey, what'd you get there, um, Falcon? Falcon was a seventeen. Falcon was a seventeen. Am I right in thinking that you can't put that up yourself, right? You're correct. Yes. Uh, okay. Was... Falcon at seventeen. Fal- Well, no, not 17. Falkron at 17. There we go. <laughs> Got it. I think that's everybody. We will start with Islin. 24. You're muted. You're muted uh, there. Islin. <laughs> but I did. Um, so these things here, these are curtains, so I don't have a clear line of sight. Is that correct? They have been, they were completely ripped to shreds in the oh. last, in the last, uh, game. Okay. Let's see. Uh, of all the debris, does it look like there's anything that I can hide behind? Uh, let's see. I, that looks pretty good there. Right. Um, you could hide behind the wall there. Just a quick question, Sean. Is the... Hmm? Has the map changed because it's a lot more purple for me? Is it meant to be that? Yet? Yes, it has okay. changed. That was the violet glow that had erupted. Indeed. I was guessing. All right, so I'm going to uh, hop behind here and uh, and do a stealth check. Very good. And I will uh, hop out and uh, Hellfire Shortbow. I've never uh, gotten rid of it since we had our first combat. It's been in hand, so I will. Uh, I will take a shot at him that is a dirty 20 dirty 20 uh, is a hit and that would be uh, oh, not great at damage but 10 points 10 points as the arrow comes streaking towards him uh, he notices it just at the last second and your hand goes out and knocks away the arrow Grr. Ah. And it scratches as it goes past him. Did seem to do a little damage, but not un- not as much as you were expecting. Okay. Taken away his reaction, hopefully. Anything else there, Yasin? Uh No, I think I will stay put. Very good. Gideon um, <laughs> puts his hand out and <laughs> in a sort of a misty step-like ability moves away and then seems to glide away. You see him land on top of a a small uh, mausoleum uh, on top of it. He folds his arms and you see a purple glow in his eyes that is reflecting from the light of the companion above him. That will be the end of his turn. Swarm of zombies comes forward. And those of you with high passive perceptions are become aware that there is another swarm of zombies that is coming from behind you, just roiling form of corpses, skeletons, just sort of falling over each other. And as they're almost, they're too big as a group to move through the space, but they sort of flow through it in a form like tar moving past the doorframe. 
They come forward and let's see here. Moves to there and then to there. This one comes forward and attacks you, Silas. Let's see here. Hitting AC 12. That's a miss. So claws and biting, they just sort of come out at you and you um, are able to block it with your uh, blade. They're moving slowly. It seems to just be zombies and skeletons, except there are a lot of them. And it makes it difficult to get an idea of where to strike. Um, that is the end of the zombies turn. That will bring us to Falkrin. Fantastic. I'm going to turn undead. Very good. <laughs> All right. So that'll be, uh, I guess, a, is it a mass wisdom save for that DM? or uh, It's going to be a single wisdom save. Like... So you're, um, you have destroy undead, right? Yes, indeed. At up to at, uh, what any level? undead at the uh, half level. The half level. Very good. So, mm -hmm. what do you say, Falkren? Falkren, what do you say? Uh, <laughs> she, uh, that, yeah. So, uh, she, she, like, sees the, the rolling mass come at her, and she's just like, go back to the shadow boom and like she like like takes it takes out her hammer and just smashes it on the ground and like you see the tile crack very good this wave of um radiant energy just boom, emanates from falcron and you see it hit the uh, zombies in front of you with a burst of holy light just and they are just annihilated. Bits and pieces of zombie go flying, turning to dust and ash, and they fall away, revealing in their center a group of other undead that have been hidden inside them. The blast hits the zombies that came in the back as well, and again, just they're completely washed against the side of the uh, cathedral falling in bits and pieces of ash and bone as they are destroyed, revealing within them another group of undead. We tell just on sight what kind of undead? They look very similar to the first undead that you encountered here in El Terrell when you were trying to save um, Shora. The little girl. Mm. Anything else from you, Falkron? Uh, so, uh, so that that was my action, uh, and then I'm gonna shout to the group, uh, "This way, friends!" And so, uh, and then I'm gonna take my movement to then move forward to engage uh, what I DM what I what I recognize these creatures. Since you've uh, you or definitely no recognize them as being anymore. undead, um, and you recognize them and seen them. Uh, earlier, a few days ago. Here now. Throw. Okay. All right, excellent. So Let's you say. were done? This one? Yes. All right, that will bring us to Lulu. Oh, dear. What should we do? Do you have any ranged magic left? Um, I, I can do the, I can do the, my nose one more time. Save it. Okay. Wait, and, and I tell, I like gesture for her to come stay with me. All right, she comes and she is staying with you. Bring us to Jax. Uh, so Jax knows that they're coming from behind. They can't see him line of sight wise. Rick. So I will hide. Oh yeah, natural one with a 12. Oh my God. Do they see me? <laughs> It is the fifth oh in the row. Oh my lord, that's incredible. But have they got a perception of 12? I'm going to check. <laughs> so this is wisdom, oh right? God. Yeah. You're good. 
I'm good, okay. I then move up, so that's 5, 10, 15, and I shoot purple. Dark purple. Dark purple, got <clears> it. Uh, I can't believe that it is the fourth number one. Uh, 20. 20, 20 damage, but that is non magical, correct? 20 to hit. <clears throat> 20 to hit is a hit. 24 non magical. 24 non magical. So, got it. Your arrow goes right through it, ripping out what looks to be a very vital organ, but it continues moving towards you. Anything else, Jax? Uh, yeah, so that was, uh, what did I say? It was 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, back to there. All right. Uh, and I've already done my bonus action. <clears throat> it's me done. Got it. All right. And that brings us to Locke. <laughs> ah, I knew this was going to happen. And he uh, scampers around the corner, um, running up. Um, he seems to lose speed per second, then scampers just a little bit more. Just that last few feet comes forward, and he taps Silas and Falcon on the back as he does. He says, huh, you're doing a really great thing here. Alder Ravengard's a great man, um, but don't die. And he runs past and then back into behind the rest of the group. And uh, he has cast Heroism on Silas and Falkron. Let's see here. Um, so that is three points of temporary hit points for Silas and Falkron. Um, and it will uh, continue. At, it will um, with each each of your turns. At the beginning of your turn, you get another three uh, temporary hit points, as long as he maintains concentration. Okay, I long for the plus. day when he doesn't have to cast heroism for me to have that skill. <laughs> All right. Um, the uh, larger sized of these uh, purple skin creatures with long claws and tongues that are lashing around, sort of spinning around their heads in a frenzy, steps forward and he slashes with his claws at Silas. Hitting AC 15. Negative. Negative. Very good. The other one runs into the group. Do, do, do. Don't think you can quite make it. Let me just double check. Yes, yes. Right, he can only do the normal speed. So he gets to there um, and sort of paces back and forth, looking at you all, waiting for the rest of his group to join him. That will bring us to Typhon. Hmm. Uh, let's see. I will. Got enough here. 5, 10, 10 20. I'm going to move to here mm -hmm. and extend my hands and say, Enkaf uh, um, Matzah! And have uh, burning hands leap forward. Mm. Burning hands! Did, did you say Yon Kath? I said, uh, Enkav Mata. Is your voice change going to be on? Because it's not. Uh, I'll get it up in a second. I just realized as I was casting, I didn't have it on. So. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, it spells not quite what it's uh, meant to be, but I need, it's uh, deck saves from them. All right. Casting so... it at level two. Got it. For super below <sighs> average damage. Uh, deck saves from all three of them. Very good. We got a 10, a 19, and a 17. Uh, 10 fails. The other succeed for half of five. So the one in the front takes the full. I will also... Wait. Never mind. Yeah, we're good. And the other two... Uh, right... 
Next up, we have the imp. Um, imp will just try to use the help action on this um, scary undead. Very good. Next uh, melee attack against him has uh, advantage. Now the ghouls go. One of the ghouls steps forward and attacks Falkron with claws. Hitting AC 11. That is a fail. Uh, One comes up into its face, squeezing and attacks. Disadvantage. You see 13. He steps out. You may also make a fail. A, take an attack of opportunity if you wish. Silas, you may as well. I'll wait the turn. Okay. Can and will. All right, so I'm going to be swinging with Quietus. So let's roll that bad one. Oh. I'm afraid that that does what not that? hit. What, what, that what was the a- roll? That was yet another critical fail, friends. Uh, so uh, that was that was a nine with my plus of eight. Oh lord! I'm We're gonna see if way. I can hit with uh, my moon touched elven glaive, Aranian, for a twenty-four to hit. That is a hit, and that will do nine points magic damage. Very good. And I'll just give a Ugh. sidelong glance at Falkrin. Hmm. All right. Nice. <laughs> there were there were two in front of me. <laughs> the other ghouls run to here. Both of them attack lock. Oh, kitty. Uh, yay. First one hits AC 22, which succeeds, except lock uses a bardic inspiration to do cutting words. I believe that that will. He gets to roll the eight, which brings the total down below his AC. So that first one does not ta- it does not hit him. However, the other one also attacks. Can you do the hissy cat noises like he might be? <laughs> That's and the other one does it. Does it hits AC eighteen, nine slashing damage. Locke has to make a. Constitution saving throw. Well, if he dies, at least I get to eat him. He uh, rolls a nine. Which, <laughs> rolls a nine, which is Goblin not a success. Um, and let's see, he took nine points of slashing. So he also has to make a Constitution save to keep his concentration up for his spell. That he succeeds. So he is stunned, but he has maintaining concentration. Right, that is the ghouls done. Persephone, it is your turn. All right, uh, I use my half movement with the Duke to bring him here. Uh, I'm kind of hoping that he, I can put him like right there ish. Okay, uh, and then I'm gonna use minor illusion to just put some rubble that looks like the rubble that's around, kind of obscuring him very just, well. And I think that's all I can do. Okie doke. Hold our Raven Guard's turn. I'm going to roll this for the group. A, I tell him not to do anything. <laughs> a burst of energy um, emits from Uldar as he somehow sensing the threat, and there is a burst of radiant energy that uh, comes out of him. Let's see. Sure, I get the right one up here. There it is. Oh, Can everybody see that? Oh, Typhoon, you are lucky. Usually, it ain't. Radiant energy comes out, and as it does, <laughs> the uh, undead that are facing off against uh, Silas and Falkrin are uh, uh, hiss as there's a burning sensation. You see smoke coming up from their skin. What about Usually? That is him done. Hmm? Islin seems to be fine. Oh, okay. So like that will bring us to there. Silas. And what did that do to my skin or something? Did nothing to your skin. It did okay. it to the uh, the um, undead. 
Oh, lovely. Okay. Well, I'm going to go for a shot on green here. Uh, swinging Iranian. And waiting for roll 20. That is a 10 to hit. Okay. Uh, but 10 is not hit. Also, I've just been informed that stunning breaks concentration. So uh, the uh, temporary hit points that he that uh, Locke provided you with have faded. So, they fade? Bummer. I thought we just wouldn't get any more if he lost concentration. Let me see here. Say it lasts until the spell ends. When the spell ends, the target loses any remaining temporary hit points from the spell. Um, so the spell has ended. You no longer have those temporary hit points, I'm afraid. Um, right. The roll of 10 does not hit. Anything else? Uh, that's uh, That'll be it for me. Very good. Rhea steps forward and attacks this creature here who's holding his action. He claws out at her. Missing. Rhea attacks him. Who's Rhea attacking? Purple. The uh, the orange undead that is right next to the imp. Okay, she's got value. Ugh. Even with advantage because of the strength damage he's taken, it does not connect. She lifts her sword and as it comes down, it's just... <sighs> she centers herself, trying desperately to find her energy. And that will bring us back to the top of the order. Okay. But before that happens, you hear... <laughs> as more zombies seem to appear from outside. We gotta get it, man. Uh, just a moment while I find my thing. There we go. And as it as they do appear, there is also a intensification of the purple energy that comes up around Gideon Lightward. That will be the top of that order, and Islin, it is now your turn. Uh, So for future reference, um, this is my first uh, spellcaster. I cannot do a cantrip and a spell, uh, a bonus action cantrip, and like a second level action spell at the same time. So you can you can do a you can do a sorry blanking. Um, you can cast a cantrip and a first level spell as long as the first level spell is a bonus action. Okay, but first level specifically is that yes. correct? Any it's any leveled spell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any leveled yeah, spell, yeah, as long yeah. as it's a bonus action to cast, you I can see. then cast a cantrip on top of that. Except the cantrip has to only take one action to cast. Okay, that's good to know. I was going to do something else, but uh, Persephone, I kind of agree with you. All right, so I am going to hide once again behind the desk or fallen debris. Uh, that's a seventeen for stealth. Okay. And these walls are down. It looks like right. All of these things have kind of there's fallen. um oh there's a. Uh, Stained glass windows all around that have smashed and fallen on the floor. They're completely open to the uh, outside. Ah, okay. All right. Then from uh, from the window, I will uh, take another shot at uh, at From Gideon. what window? Uh, is this the window where I am right now? No. I see smash. Oh, that's not smash. Mm, I misread the map. Ah, uh, if I get to the doorway instead, do I have a line... I believe if you stand right behind Falkron, you can draw a line from your square to Gideon's square. I don't see Gideon on the map. I apologize. He is here. Oh, there he is. Okay. Yes. Uh, then that is what I will do. I will pop out from behind Falkron. With What's the, the range fire for sneak attack? Uh, I have 80. He's 90 feet away. 90. Okay, then I'm going to do what I was going to do the first time. I'm going to... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. If he's 90, I thought he was 85 away. I thought maybe if you occupy Falkron space and then get out of it, but... Uh, I will I will just pop out and I will take a shot at green. Sorry for the logistics, friends. 
That's a 26 to hit. That is a hit. You still have varnish. Oh, I do. Uh, it would be 13 damage, but I'll crit fish. Uh, so, yes, 13 damage. Okay. Uh, and I will run back behind. And that was on green? Three, on green. All right, that is magic damage. Very well. Let's see here. Um, double check that on um, on sneak attack there, uh, guys. The um, the range I think for a short is it? A, it's a short bow, right? It is a short bow. So the range is eighty. Yeah, I and think. Then, and if you're above, and then disadvantage. disadvantage. So if it's a disadvantage, you don't you can't get sneak attack. That's correct. Yeah, which is why I didn't do it. Right. But if you're hidden, then you would have advantage, so it would cancel out, but you still don't have advantage, so yeah, no sneak attack. Okay. Understood. That will bring us then to Gideon Lightward. Gideon Lightward holds his ground and does nothing. Floating down from the ceiling comes one of the specters that you fought earlier that ran away from Falkrin's, um turn undead and it comes down right beside you Islin, and attacks isn't this the reason that Rhea is weak it is but as it moves into the area where um, the light is emanating from uh, Uldar Ravenguard uh, it takes some damage but it reaches out with its hands and touches you with a caress Islin. it hits AC 14 that is a miss. That is a miss. All right. And it takes... Got it. Hisses as it backs away. Take care of my friend's body, Islin. That is it done. That will bring us to the next in line, which is Falkrum. Excellent. I'm going to, uh, again, attempt to hopefully hit something with Quietus. So I believe I've got a Google in front of me. So how about a 17 to hit? 17's a hit. Fantastic. Okay. So let us roll that damage. So that is going to be uh, 2d8 because mm-hmm. it is um, undead. And then ooh, calm down. <laughs> so many buttons to push. All right. Uh, so, oh, wow. Okay, so that's 10 damage plus my modifier. Of, so that's 15 magical slashy undead ouchy damage. And this is on red? That is going to be on red, yes. So as you swing quietus, it begins to vibrate. And as you... There's a... A uh, sort of a uh, an explosion that comes down, a bright burst of light as the ghoul is destroyed. And nice. I then return Silas. I then return Silas's side glance, uh, and then <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and um, use my bonus action to summon Steve. Okay. Uh, um, Trimpanzee. That counts as two. <laughs> uh, and then I'm gonna put. Uh, yeah. Um, so let's I, see. Where did I put all that? Yes. Yes. Actually, where where would you like Steve? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would like Steve uh, to hit uh, the green. Uh, hit green, the uh, the ghoul in front of Silas. So Steve appears behind Green and roll for Steve. I will roll for Steve. All right. Steve rolls for Steve, us. Steve. Da, 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 for the fifteen. Da, 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 fifteen da, da, is a hit. Fantastic. Okay. And then... Hang on a second, friends. Just realized... Uh, I think it's a D8 from our spiritual weapon. Mm. If I'm not mistaken. I think that is correct, actually. Awesome. And Steve does... <laughs> One! 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 Punk. Mad... Ping. Yeah. 
<laughs> Anything else from you, Falkron? No, I mean, after that, yeah, no, I'm good. All right. Yeah. Lulu Steve. runs forward and and gives the help action for Rhea on her next attack. I'm going to move. So moves, she. I'm going to move her slightly past so she doesn't get in the way of anything else. And that will be the end of her turn. Jax. Uh, who did he do the help on? Uh, on purple. Uh, I will pull my dagger and lunge forward towards Orange. Orange. All right, Orange. You have advantage on that because of uh, the imp. Uh, the imp hasn't had his go yet, though. Yeah, imp did it. Rhea took the advantage. From Rhea me. took the advantage. You got See, it. I, I'm Thank honest. you. Fifteen to hit. Fifteen's a hit. Uh, Twenty magical. Wow. <laughs> His tongue l- lashes around and looks and focuses right on you. Oh, I do apologize. And then I disengage. 15. 20. And I stand behind the pew. Very good. Anything else, Jax? No, it's me done. All right. Locke is stunned. Locke is stunned for his turn. Continues to be stunned. Hopes to not be stunned. Locke rolls. A constitution save. And I want to give a shout out to ZC and Rico in chat. Uh, apparently, there was a little bit of damage that we missed. Was there? What was it uh, for? Spiritual weapon is 1d8 plus wisdom. Not of course just 1d8. It is. Yeah. Yes. So uh, that's uh, an additional four damage. Every little bit. Right. Would you guys mind while I try to revive Locke Beauregard. Okay. Locke has made his saving throw and shakes off the effects of the stun. Oh! 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 <laughs> this is a problem! Um, and that is his turn. Now it is this fellow's turn. Green. Green attacks Algren. Hitting AC 19. Um, however, oh, yep, that'll do it. However, Locke mm-hmm. uses his cutting words. Roll that lock. It's a D8, I believe. Can he see him, though? Oh, good Mystic call. Green. He cannot see him. Nope. Good call. Thanks, Jax. Uh, so he cannot do that. I, I have to be honest. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, I was I was drawing it at the same time on the map, it so it's takes, kinda, yeah. it takes a village, guys. I appreciate it. So that's ten points of slashing, and I need a constitution saving throw from you, Falkron. All right then. Uh is this a constitution is that, is that con save at advantage? No. It's or, not poison. All right. It is not poison. Alright then. Ooh, con save. I mean if I mean, you've got advantage, you can the use it. The days when I hope I mean I mean, some days I hope it's poison, right? So, uh, all right, so rolling that d20. This is going to be adding... T- oh, yeah, 16 plus 2 is 18 for that You are save. good. You have not succumbed to the effects Which is of good, the paralysis. Right? Oh, yes, thank God. But you still, take, uh, <laughs> you still take 10 points of slashing damage. Phew. Which will bring us to Typhon. Yes. Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. No, no I've got me. one more. One more of these guys to take care of. Tax Rhea. Hitting AC 17, which is a hit. 12 points of slashing. Rhea gasps as she falls to her knees and closes her eyes and stands up with a will. You see that blood is pouring from multiple wounds on her body. She is not looking good. Uh, Oh, however, Locke will, cutting words, this one. Because he sees it coming and he says, you big bully, don't, don't you hurt this person I just met a few minutes ago. Um, and he rolls the eight. Um, ooh, with an eight. So, she's actually, she's she's clad in the livery of Elturel. She is. That's right? A good point. So if anybody, that's who Locke would do that for. Very good point. So, that's... Oops. So as the uh, slash comes in at the very last second, uh, at these words, it distracts this creature enough so that it looks at it and 
Rhea is able to sluggishly dodge out of the way. Um, that will bring us now to Typhon. Typhon, you are muted. If you ah, okay. I will... Um, I'm in close with this guy, so I will reach out, have electricity leap from my hands, as I say. And make an attack. Is it... I suppose it doesn't have any armor or anything on it, does it? No. It's just all fleshy. All right. Cool. Then for the attack, I'll have a 17 to hit. That is a hit. All right. Four. Whoops. I accidentally rolled the attack again. 11 points of lightning damage. Yes. And I will move away. And as the lightning hits it, it explodes as it also took some damage from being in the Nimbus of Light from Uldar Ravenguard. And it is gone. Ah. Oh no! Oh that is the no! end of it. Meanwhile... Anything else, Stefan? Meanwhile, do we all want to roll a d20? Because thanks hey. to Pixie Quinn... She's come up oh, to 500 bits. Oh, oh. For us to get inspiration. Like Santa. She is. Oh, I already had it. Okay. I rolled a nine. Oh, I'm, I'm leading it in a moment. <laughs> Anyone else? A nine looks roll? like it may do the job. Indeed oh, it does. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Exciting. you very much, Pixie. <laughs> All right. So that is... <laughs> Um, Typhon, you have your imp to uh, direct as well. I will repeat the health act, help action against uh, this one here. Got it. Mr. Orange. Mr. Orange. All right. A couple of ghouls. Let me see. How many cutting words has that been? That's been two from Locke. We threw one bardic inspiration in the last game. And a heal. And a heal. Yeah, I think he's done. Yep. Oh, he's all far from done. done. He's, no, he's, he's far from done, but all of, his, all of his bardic inspirations are gone. Okay. So that is... All right. So both the ghouls... Uh, one ghoul attacks Rhea, one ghoul attacks Locke. Claws come out. Uh, the one attacking Rhea hits AC 8. The one attacking Locke hits AC 21. Uh, that is 9 points of slashing damage for the kitty cat. He is down to... Not his maximum. Not his maximum. So he'd taken a little damage from the fight prior to everybody showing up. But he did take the heal from Prayer of Healing. So... Let me just double check here. It's very quiet. Math. <laughs> <laughs> I like that the uh, that Gideon in his little chambers has the um, enchanter's table from Skyrim in the yeah you notice that right corner yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he would have been back up at max because of the pair of healing. He just took nine points of damage, so he is at thirty. He took okay. Damage earlier as well. Uh, yes, that he did. I think that was a nine. Yeah. Looking up here. Could have been seven. Yeah, We're gonna nine. split the difference two. and call it six. Alrighty. All right. So that brings us to the. Uldar Ravenguard. Uldar Ravenguard. There's another... As he raises to his feet, trying to engage in this combat. He rolls a three. This time, instead of positive energy coming out, it is... And there is a, a nimbus of black uh, purple energy that seems to be emanating from uh, the helmet, and it streaks over everybody who is within... Five feet. This radius. Damn it! 
Uh, let's see here. Crap. Everybody, please take six points of lightning damage. No saving oh. throw? Hmm? No saving throw? No saving throw. Yikes. And that will bring us to Persephone. All right. Um, let me see if I've done this math right. So I'm going to do... Ah! I'm going to do 5, 10, 15. Now, is this difficult terrain here? Uh, no, dead? it's just a dead body. Yeah, you just step right over it. No problem. 20, 25, 30... 35. I'd like to just jump down there. Is that possible? It is. How much do I need to do anything? Does Blue watch her go? Uh, I'm sorry. I was distracted there for a moment. As you move past Blue, he would get an attack of opportunity. Do you still wish to do that, Persephone? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So he reaches out as you move past him. Hmm, with his claws, he hits AC 8. Does not hit. Yes. Indeed. Yes. Uh, crap, I lost my count. Uh, five, okay, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, okay. Uh, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Um, and I, that's what I do. Very good, any bonus action? No, I mean, like, no person who's not a rogue can't hide, right? Like, I can't even attempt it. Well, you could hide, but it would not have the same effect that it does with a rogue. Uh, I just want to not if you, if you attack like somebody, thumb. If you attack somebody when when they don't know you're there, you have advantage on it, but you won't get you won't, um, you won't get more just don't want to be like seen. I'm not worried about, like, damage or anything. He watched you run out, okay. and he's been, <laughs> his eyes are following you as you come by. <laughs> so. Okay. Then that's all I do. Very good. Um, that brings us to Silas. I'm going to step next to ex uh, what's the correct pronunciation of excess Steve? It's, is it Steve? Steve? <laughs> Steve? Yes. Steve Austin. Steve. He is sacred weapon Steve Austin, uh, and I'm going to take a swipe with my. Elven Glaive at uh, blue. Very good. Swinging for 21 to hit. 21 to hit. And doing uh, 11 points of magic damage. His undead head <laughs> flies off. As, as it should. Yes. And then uh, I am going to enter the pursuit. Having no real idea of what's happening behind me because of the wall. I'm going to move. Uh, the, I already moved five. There's 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And scream something at Gideon that's very unpleasant and finish my turn. <laughs> Good. Um, that will be the end of Silas. Um, it's not the end of him. Gosh, what is it? It's my, the my turn. I'm not <laughs> dead yet. Oh. The shambling mount, um, group of zombies comes <laughs> coming and just claws and teeth and legs and elbows. Just It's trying to sort of engulf you as it moves into your space. And you are attacked, hitting AC 16. That's a miss. I'm sorry, I wasn't looking at the screen. That's a miss. Silas, Silas can you hear? Yes. Miss. I was. I was looking. I was. I'm sorry. So yes. 16 is a miss. Okay, very good. That will bring us to Rhea. Rhea attempts to attack with advantage. Ah, that time she hits. She cleaves a nice portion of the thing's arm off. That is the end of her turn. That will bring us to the end of the round, back to the top. And Gideon sort of does one of these, and there's another group of undead that comes up from the ground. 
this time over here. Dang it. <laughs> Anything, <laughs> Yislin? Hmm? Uh, roll a D, uh, yes. roll a D100. So. D100. 79. Thank you very much, Isometric. We've just got another healing potion. Wow. All right. Cheers, Dude. buddy. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> Who gets it? So that goes to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It goes to. Goes to Rhea. Rhea. <laughs> she needs it. She needs <laughs> That's it. That's good. Yeah. That's she's good. actually. I, I had forgotten about the prayer of healing. She's actually doing much better than what I described. She's okay. just sort of. She's well, she just can... sort of. I mean, she's, what a... she's a drama queen. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> I've, I've got to take a moment here. Isometric T. Yeah. Is uh, busting out and chat over there. Isometric T, you're. Uh... Ooh. Whoa! Ooh. Thank you very, very much. Just donated a thousand bits and then comes in and drops five subs. Thank you very, very wow. much. Wow! Fantastic. Cheers, mate. Much appreciated. Um, that's very, very generous of you. Speaking of generous, Island. Yes. Uh, so Island is going to use her movement and her bonus action to uh, dash to uh, this spot right here, and uh, she will take. Uh, uh, she will have her. Hellfire Shortbow, the flames are growing a little bit brighter, and you can see them reflected in her eyes as she takes a shot at Gideon. Very good. Unfortunately, as the arrow streaks across the graveyard, as it reaches this nimbus of energy surrounding, you can see it slows down for a second before disappearing. That is where she will remain. All right. Gideon Lightward turns his baleful eyes upon you, Persephone. I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Oh, okay. Twelve. Twelve is not enough. The eyes bore into you and you feel the energy being sapped away from you, almost as if you're t becoming older. Anybody who can see her sees Persephone's oh, blonde no. hair begin to fade to gray, and she looks at her hands as they start to wrinkle a bit. You take 22 points of necrotic damage. Oh, she And then did. do I stay old? Uh, that was just flavor, just the damage being okay. done. Okay. Ah, I evil thought it was that <laughs> That's evil. I thought it I thought it was that spell that makes you permanently older. <laughs> like, mm. oh, oh that's that old thing. No, no, this was just a necrotic attack. Nice. Alright. That will bring us to the Spectre. Um, oh, no. he's, he's, oh, he's a bobble. He's a ghost. There he is. Now everybody can see him. He moves through the um, dark energy and comes up behind Falkron and just... You feel your hair in the back of your head, Falkron, start to uh, almost... It's almost like trying to get away from this spectral hand as it reaches right into your head with its claw. Hitting AC 17. Ryan's frozen. Oh, I think well, he's frozen. Is, is he like, oh. or he's just looking at you like, really? AC 17. Did it hit? Ryan, did it hit AC 17? No, not enough. Not enough. What was it? Come on, go ask him. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. We'll come back to that. There it is. Not enough. Got it. The All right. Ne so necrotic damage to the internet connection. <laughs> yes. So uh, as the hand reaches into uh, Falkron's head, she feels it and she ducks out of the way. And the hand, she, yeah. <laughs> it sort of hisses at you as it's missed. But now Falkron, it is your turn. If you've got inspiration, use it because we're rolling for inspiration at the end of this round. Thanks to thanks to Pixie again. <laughs> So if you've got inspiration making it and you want to be in for the role, use uh. it. Pixie, you're awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, uh, talk. Talk. Yeah, Falkron, I'm not getting you, buddy. 
Uh, uh, can everybody he can everybody hear me? We can hear, can you, hear now. you now. now yes. Can. You can hear me now. Yep. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. yes. All right, lovely. Do something. So uh, I'm gonna. I I'm got. All right, so uh, I'm rolling quietus with inspiration. So. Okay. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Oh, Twenty hits. Twenty. On that. Well, that's delightful. Okay, so then is that four D8? That's so much. That's so many D8, yes. Because the specter. Yeah, that, that is all the D8. All the, the D8s, right, so yep. Four D8 damage on the spec. 18 uh, magical quietus damage. Wow, so, okay, so that, that, that as, damage as, roll was 1818. Yeah, <laughs> like, as, you, as you duck away, you sort of wildly swing with quietus and just... And as it passes through the specter, just and the specter disappears in a font of radiant light. Uh, technically, he didn't run with inspiration, so he gets to keep it. It's true. I mean, but I, but I did. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, uh, true. and then I'm gonna. That's true. And I'm gonna send Steve uh, to go help uh, Silas. So I'm gonna send Steve to attack the horde. All right, make that roll for Steve. All right, so now Steve will roll with inspiration, and I'm going to actually do it this time. He's going to stop the mud hole uh, in their asses and walk it dry. Oof. That's a hit. Oh. Well, ha! All right. Awesome. He so, rolled so that'll two be a 2d20. He, he rolled a, a... He added the d20s together. But. Oh. <laughs> oh! Thank you. That, that is... So we're going to count that as using your inspiration, and you failed. No, I'm not... I'm just kidding. Good, you good. just... Yeah. So Wasn't there a not, proficiency bonus or something on that? It's not just a flat roll, is it? Even with the proficiency bonus, I don't think he would make it. So, get anything else, Paul? Probably, yeah. Uh, so it'd probably be like a. F uh, no, that that is that is all my mojo for that one. So, what is your spellcasting modifier on that? It'd be a plus uh, seven. Spellcasting modifier is a. That is a plus seven. Yeah. Plus yeah, you'd get plus seven. Plus seven. So a total 14. of fourteen on the five. A roll yes. of a five. That is a hit. Aha. So what's the damage? Oh, uh, sorry, the damage is... Let me go ahead and do that D8 for you. From... 1D8 uh, plus nine. your wisdom modifier. 5 nine. plus 4 is 9. Yes, 9-9. Nine, nine. Very good. So That will bring us to Lulu. Thank you, Lulu, what are you going to do? Uh, Lulu um, flies into this uh, zombie again, um, giving advantage to the next melee attack against her. Jax, your turn. Okay, Jax uh, will come in. He's already hit this guy once, but he will roll with advantage. Da, 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 da. That one there. All right. And that is, thank God for that. That's a 20, hit. 22. And that. Unless you roll really bad, yeah. 24 magical damage. That will finish okay. off this creature. Oh, I did it. <laughs> You slash it on its legs, and a hamstring sort of roll up the leg behind it. It falls to its knees, and you cut it so deeply across its throat that the head just sort of falls back and falls down dead. Anything else from you, Jax? Uh, I will stay there. Very good. Lock. <sighs> okay. And he reaches out and attacks the um, ghoul in front of him. Let me just make sure that that is, in fact, what he wants to do. I get advantage on him, then. Which one's he doing it on? Yeah, so he pulls out a, a short sword, but it's a strange-looking short sword. It doesn't have any curve to it. It's like a tanto, for those of you who know what that is. And he swings it. He holds it up uh, next to his ear, and he charges, and he swings it like a samurai blade. He must have spent some time in the Hosei strides. Maybe he has. Maybe he has. He will attack. Come on, come on. Give me what I want. It was Give me pink that had attacked Locke earlier. Purple had attacked Rhea, and pink had attacked Locke. Yes, he is attacking purple. He hits, doing that much damage um, with sneak attack because it is engaged with Rhea. So, oh, it does a mighty blow, but it is still standing, but barely. Mm -hmm. That will be the end of Locke's turn. The ghast is dead. 
which will bring us to Typhon. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I will um, I'm gonna move in a bit and tell the group inside, um, uh, we need to disrupt what is going on outside. Quick, dispatch these. And I, he will f- cast his chill touch on pink mm-hmm. first. Um, with looking at a 23 to hit. 23 is a hit. For nine necrotic damage. Nine necrotic damage. Thank you. And he will then approach it threateningly. Um, a threatening manner as if trying to sort of distract it and get it to turn on him. Uh, since these companions seem to have taken damage and then I will have the imp use the help action against the purple one. Very good. That's my turn. Uh, okay. Imp is done. Imp is done. All right. The ghoul in front of the ghoul that is right next to um, Locke steps to the side to attack Rhea better. Reaches out with its claws with a crit. So that is oh. that much damage to her. Um, she needs to make a constitution save. Got that healing potion. And I'm going to use inspiration on this constitution healing save healing save. Uh so she succeeds. Good thing too. And so she throws Yay. off the effects of the ghoul's poison. The other ghoul attacks Locke. Actually, he attacks Typhon. Oh. He does so uh, with, at disadvantage. Well, he good because he rolled two natural ones. So, oh, good. <laughs> it just just completely doesn't. It was all set to attack Locke, but it saw you coming and lost its momentum completely and whiffs right in front of your face. Uldar Ravenguard rolls a d4. Two. The nimbus surrounding him changes from the black, dark electrical energy to the radiant energy again. Anything else? No, I'm in pain. All right, Persephone. We need to use them like a grenade. Just throw old our raven guard at them. (laughs) (laughs) All right, I'm afraid this is going to be pointless because I'm afraid we need to dispel the magic, but I'm going to cast shatter right on top of um, the big bad there at the third level. So uh, dex save, uh, con save 15. Con save. Uh, Plus seven to his con save, so he succeeds with a 16. Dang it. Sorry. I thought oh, sure barely saved too. Yeah, oh. I thought he for sure he wouldn't save with what he rolled, but with a plus seven, he does. Um, and he, I don't think he takes any damage if it's a fail, right? No. As you okay. uh, cast the spell, you see uh, there was floating around him another small creature that you also hit, and it failed its saving throw. Uh, what kind of damage is this? It's a it's half on a success, so. And it's thunder. Oh, great. Uh, it's thunder damage. Thunder damage. So twenty-two how much for damage? the thing that's twenty-two for the one that failed, and apparently eleven for. Uh, uh, sorry. Flip Gideon. Back. Yeah. Gideon. And if he's concentrating on anything, that would be a con save. Indeed, it would. Unless he has evasion. He succeeded his con save. And the creature that is floating around him, sort of moving around his head, uh, did take damage from the shatter, but not as much as you were expecting it to, Persephone. Anything else? All right. Silas. Uh, I'm actually going to... The the mass of zombies that I'm next to, that they attack Mm -hmm. as one, right? They do. Okay, then I'm just going to... Follow it, actually in your space. I'm going to follow Persephone's heroic example and just simply walk away from them, if I am able to. Okay. Um, do you wish to disengage or? 
No, no, I'm going to provoke. But if I can move through them, do I think I can get through them? And would that be difficult terrain to get to the other side? It of would them? be difficult terrain. Um, okay. And you can move through them. They are a swarm. So you just sort of b- okay. muscle through them and move, move through them. So, but as you wait. emerge from it, you take an attack of opportunity. Could okay, you just go so- directly south and like just take... Jump off the stairs. Yeah, a little That's bit. That's going to provoke it anyway, but I can do that. But you wouldn't lose movement. Jump off the stairs. All. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, and then I'm going to move. So that's five, ten, and I'll wait to see if that provoked opportunity. It shot. did. It did provoke an opportunity attack, uh, but they rolled a natural one. So oh, then they missed me. So that's five, ten movement, 15, 20, 25, 30. I'm, I'm getting there. Uh, and woe is me. I have reach, but no range attacks. Um, so I'm going to move right up into Gideon's face with another... He, he is up 10 five, feet. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And he's hovering, or he is simply... He's, he's on top of a, of a okay. uh, mausoleum. And I'm right next to him, and I'm out mm-hmm. of... That's my movement. That's my thing. Let me Woo. do a quick double check. <laughs> and I'm going to turn around over my shoulder and yell to Persephone please Persephone you can make this which through the power of Silas uh, let me roll a d8 she feels bolstered with 12 hit points very cool holy moly is this uh that is, is a die that I can expend as a right, bonus. Temp, is temp hit points, right? Or is it just yield? It is temp. So temp yeah, so. HP 12. Right. And that's uh, next to the main HP on your character sheet. So running up in Gideon's face. And then trying to get Persephone to complete her plan with me. That's it. Okay. All right. As you... Shout out to her, appearing from nowhere. Two strange, bizarre creatures. They look like insects, but have a sort of a demonic um, uh, look to them. I will try to find them here to show them to the group. Hmm. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Yes. Yes. They're each carrying a trident. They have glowing orange eyes, multiple hands, and as you run run up to Gideon, they appear from nowhere and rush up to you to attack. Of course, I always get to say, they appear and they get to attack in their same turn. They do. Ugh. It's, it's your uh, turn to question a ruling next, Jax. <laughs> so they attack you twice each. So I have an 11 to hit, a 15 to hit, a 19 to hit, and a 13 to hit. There's one Holy crap. Six piercing damage. And that is the end of their turn. <clears throat> you see, I, I did even better than I realized drawing their attacks, Persephone. Now... <laughs> The path is clear for you, Persephone. No, but I don't want to go up against this plus seven again. I'm trying to figure out another idea. Let's see here. The zombie horde here moves. One, two, three, four. (laughs) One, two, three, four. And just moves. And this group of um, zombie bodies sort of moves into your space, clawing and, and ripping at your clothing. Uh, but they do not have enough actions left to attack. And that brings us to Rhea. Rhea says, Death, die! She brings her sword down with... No, uh, it doesn't have advantage anymore, right? Jax used that up. No, I didn't. No, I think he, he used it on the orange one. The purple one is orange. still up. Yeah. Or the yeah. purple one is still up. Great. Bowie so was meant to get advantage with... against it, but didn't roll it. So yeah, she still got it. I got it. She hits, and it is crushed and dead. 
that is the, and she also, she just gets another attack, so she takes another step and attacks Pink. Hitting again. Nice. It is I still up. I'll still cheer at NPC, I don't care. All right. That is the end of that round. Which Brings means us back to the we've top. all got a roll at the 20, the thanks to Pixie. Obviously, oh. it happened a while ago, but <laughs> I was Pixie. waiting for the end of the round. Thank you very much, Oh, Pixie. Silas! Oh. You need that it. I had good. to get one of these sooner or later. Silas, <laughs> Silas needs it. <laughs> what do I get anyway? What is that that I get? What you do get I win? What do I win? Proper D20 inspiration on your D&D Beyond tab. Next you hit nice. points as an inspiration. Thank you very much, Pixie. What? Yeah, you might have just saved round. Silas. Okay. Top of the round, more zombie hordes just come up out of the ground. <laughs> so Eastland That will bring is... us to the top of the round with Eastland. Yes, she's going to uh, she's going to hide behind uh, this statue here, uh, getting a twenty five for her stealth. She takes a deep breath and she mutters to herself, "I've done my end of the bargain. Now you do yours." And uh, she takes another shot at uh, Gideon with advantage. Hmm. That's a 24. That, that is a hit. And an arrow a lit with flame streaks out for 14 magical damage. All right. As it comes towards him, Gideon reaches out and tries to catch it. He does not catch it. However, he deflects it enough to alleviate some of the damage. Dang. Does that break a concentration of some kind? I'm about to check. It does not. Dang it! Hit this guy! <laughs> and I will also say, if that's as you done, Islin? Um, yeah, it is. At the start of his turn, Silas, you see the few scratches and scrapes that he has taken begin to heal. And he does not seem to be doing badly at all. He looks at you, Silas. I need you to make a constitution saving throw. I can fail that. Let's take a look at Constitution saving throw with an eight. An eight, I'm afraid, is not a success. The gaze of this creature looks deep down at you, and you feel your body sort of weakening, um, and you feel there's a pulsing in your left hand as the uh, scar left there from your arrangement with uh, Elila is seems to absorb some of the necrotic energy and pass it through your body. You take 29 points of necrotic damage. And I am down. Man. All right, that will be the end of its turn. You know, I, I probably should have used that inspiration for the saving throw. I will allow you to do that if you wish. I will let's give that a shot. Let's I'll allow it. Yeah. Definitely do that. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm pretty let's... sure we're gonna die. I'm so used to not having it. It would have been a 17. 17 is a success. So that you still take oh. half damage, though. Does that take you down? Uh, half of it was 29. 29. Yes. I was no half. Uh, does not take me down. Very good. So I was still up. Let, I, let me do the mathings. Yes, you do the math. What, what does the DM rule half of 29 is? Uh, always round down. Then that puts me. I'll get there, guys. It puts me in. No nine. problem. All right. Spectre. Spectre is dead. Spectre. Falcon. All right. Falcon wants to move to here. I'm trying to ping it. There. That's showing up. And then that should put me uh, close enough in range to cast Toll the Dead, uh, Alan Gideon. Very good. So I will need a wisdom saving throw. Indeed. Wise man, he rolled a 17. Oh, curses. Yep. So that'll, that'll beat my uh, my 15. Indeed. Uh, uh, anything and then else I'm going to go ahead. Oh, good. 
Yeah, I'm gonna have I'm, uh, Steve attack the the zombie horde that is in front of him. So that is gonna be the D20 plus a seven. So Steve rolls a uh, sixteen to hit. Sixteen is a hit. Sixteen is a hit. Fantastic, yep. and he will do his. Uh, let's see, it's a D8 plus four. 10 damage of ten nice. force damage to that undead horde. Bits and pieces of the uh, zombie horde go flying into the air. But it is still up. Most um, excellent. And, and then, uh, yeah, and then just make sure that. Alrighty. Uh, just uh, that, that falcon had moved down outside next to almost next, next to Eastland. But other than that, I am done. All right, next to Eastland. Got it. Um, that will bring us to Lulu. Lulu. <gasps> Where's Persephone? Persephone? And she I'm... begins to fly out. <sighs> she moves the... No, she didn't come into range there. She comes out here. Persephone, where is she? And she flies out and cannot see her because of the uh, zombies that have engulfed her. Um... And she goes, no! And she does her, <laughs> just in case nobody heard that. No, we did. No, we did. We did. Now we got double, double. And a blast. It, it, it echoed in the distance. <laughs> a blast comes shooting out over the uh, it lands on this zombie horde. That's a lot of damage. It is a lot of damage. Wow. Okay. Um, that Poor was Ryan's extremely effective against these, and they, uh, the amount of undead are significantly reduced. That will bring us to Jax. Okay. Jax will run down, scamper over, lock. Stab the. <laughs> what are you doing? I will stab the. Uh, try to stab the gobbit. Uh, the uh, thingy. 15. Mm-hmm. 15's a hit. Taking 25 points of that. Da- uh, no, 23 points of damage. It right? falls dead. So that was. 5 feet. Where was I? Right here, was I? Five, I'm sorry, I might have moved you trying to get to, um, yeah, there you go. 20, 25, 30. Has the map moved? Um, I couldn't get the, the, the tiles to line up with the squares, no matter how hard I tried. Don't worry about the squares, the, the, tile, the, the, the tiles, the squares are what's important. Then I will bonus action hide. Okay. Where are you hiding from? Whoever's out here. Got it. <laughs> Anything else, Jax? Try not to map game. All right. Uh, so stealth. Oh my god, a two. <laughs> Unreal. Unreal. All right. Who appears to be the most wounded that Locke would be able to see? Probably, Probably Rhea. Rhea. Probably Rhea. <laughs> yeah. Probably right. Rhea, Rhea. But also Silas. No, he can't away. see. No way of knowing <laughs> really how that's away. going. All right, so he will reach out and. Wow, well, you're uh, you're really good at this. And he casts healing uh, cure wounds. Let's see here. He's gonna cast it at second level. Oh God! He rolled a one, so that's four points of healing. Rhea. Really? It's second every, level. Every every little thing. No, that's only one no, d8. No, it's one d8. Point. So he yeah. would have needed at least one more d8. Ray's got Ray's got a healing potion as well. 
She does. Yeah. So, she all right, so that's it. four Waff. plus, so seven points of healing for Rhea. There we go. Waff. All right, that brings us to, let's see. So after he does that, he scampers out. One, two, three, four, five, and jumps out of this window, just... <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this is a big problem. Uh, everybody, everybody, there's a lot of stuff going on out here. Uh, we, we should run. I think we should run. Uh, Someone grab the Duke. Um, and that is it for Locke. We'll bring us to Typhon. Gotcha. Um, Typhon will dash to this location and the imp will dash to here to survey what's going on. That's about it for me. He's about 20 right. feet or so in the air. So that's it. Okay. Um, imp, Typhon and the Imp. Ghoul are dead. Ghoul our Raven Guard rolls a d4. The positive radiant energy continues to emanate from him. Um, that will bring us to Persephone. You didn't, uh, uh, so I'm two squares right in uh, yep. difficult terrain. So mm -hmm. 10, 20, 25. You rip 30. yourself free and they attack you as you do. Um, okay. Pardon me while I get back to them. Got it. And. Oh, they hit AC 17. It's... Um, have you forgotten something? <laughs> oh, I have! Um... Uh, do it for me. <laughs> what is, uh, hold on, I have to look it up. <laughs> A voice um, rings out in Persephone's so mind. You, Please, you allow are, me. <laughs> yes, so you begin to... Uh, tear yourself free from this group of zombies and as you do one of them reaches out and grabs you and starting to pull you back in and then you hear oh no we won't have any of that and uh your sword sort of leaps out um and moves in your hand as you just and you parry it away and you are free so that is one of those uses yes i have two more um okay now I'm gonna try to cast Cloud of Daggers. Ah. Um. <laughs> and is there a yes? Ah. Right on top of butt face here. Very nice. 11 damage, but whatever. There's a explosion of power there, and it begins to cut into him. Uh, does it attack just that five-foot square? Yes. All right. A cube of five feet on each side. A cube of five feet on each side. So that means that I'm going to need a dexterity saving throw from you as well, Silas. Meanwhile, well, before you there... roll that, in right? case, just in case, everyone's got to roll a d20 because Pixie's coming clutch again for another 300 bits. This is for a d6 <laughs> inspiration that has to be used today. Okay. okay. And Cloud of Daggers is just a five foot cube. It's a five foot cube yeah. that doesn't yeah. affect anything around it. Okay, so what is his yeah. saving throw yeah. he needs to make? It's dex. It, it doesn't give me. <coughs> it's not a saving throw? No. Right. So he just takes the damage. So okay. that, wow, that D6 goes it? to Rim or Gislin. Yep. Gislin. Thank you very much, Pixie. When it, so it's that, that, that enter or start your turn there thing. So. Got it. Got it. So on his turn, he will take the points. Um, so we'll get to that. Uh, anything else, Persephone? And then when he takes the points, that's when he, any concentration might happen. Correct. Cool. Uh, no, that's me. All right. Silas. Apologies for the cameras. We've lost Ryan for a minute, but carry on. Okay. When Ryan does pop back in, oh, the no. only person that needs to turn on and off is Tess. 
You actually just lost Silas, is all. Oh, we lost Silas. No, Ryan is still here. Oh, sorry. No, oh, there's Silas. We'll, we'll fix cameras at break. Cool. Speaking of which. Sorry, I thought it was Ryan. Um, is, it, is it break time? Sorry, guys. I just lost internet connectivity and jumped back on my phone. No, no, good one. Got it. Um, we can take a break in a moment. Um, let's finish off this round. Finish the round. That will bring us to Silas. Okay, I had missed the very last thing that happened. Um, it was Persephone's Cloud of Daggers. And was Which I worked. caught in that, I believe? You were not. You were not. not. We okay, determined, determined that you were not. Okay, that's that's good to know. Um, so I am currently surrounded? Yes. Um... I'm going to bonus action second wind. Okay. For a D10 plus three. Please roll high for nine. That's not bad. It doesn't get me to much, given that I'm surrounded. And then I'm going to use my reach. Luckily, I don't have to step outside of the range. Mm -hmm. uh, You're able to swipe up at him. I'm going to swing Oranian, my moon touched elven glaive. And I'm swing so glad for you've named it. It's a nice name. 13. 13 is not enough. But I was swinging else? at Gideon. Yes. Anything else? I don't have any bonuses to add. I don't have any inspiration. I'm, I'm, I'm all done. tapped out. Got it. Um, all right. Yeah, that was a bonus in an action. I'm all done. All righty. Um, one of the mesoliths goes and disappears and reappears in front of Falkron and Islin, although Islin is hidden from it. That is its turn. The other one attacks you, Falk uh, Silas. This time reaches out with its claw and then attacks one-handed with its melee. With my, its claw, my, little, my little 17 AC and my 18 hit points. I'm uh, <laughs> in a bad way. I got no inspiration, no dodge, no duck, no parry. You uh, are a lucky man. You take uh, hits AC 21 That's it. with his claws, 10 points of slashing, um, and it's a crit for the trident, but he only rolled a 7. So you are at one hit point, my friend. What? <laughs> that is their turn. The zombie hordes converge on Persephone. The one here moving into her space and the other one coming up behind her. I don't think they can both occupy her space, but they can still attack. AC 17. You're mute. well, muted. Uh, do I, uh, can I do please allow me before, mm -hmm. you after can. you roll, then uh, I oh, wait, that uh, again. You've already used your reaction this turn when it did its reaction you're, to get it, so you can't use it again. You're right. So you're it right. attacks you AC 17, so you take the it's, damage. I'm sure that Ugluck the Girthy and Pixie Quinn in yeah. chat. I'm sure <laughs> I think they want us to, to win this match. Yeah. <laughs> so that's three points of bludgeoning from the one that has engulfed you, and the other one attacks as well. Hitting AC 18, six points of bludgeoning. I have one hit point left, but I do oh have my. some temp, so... Okay. That is the end of them. Rhea. Your temp goes first, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, your temp... You think of your temp as like a shield. So it goes down before everything else. Uh, Rhea comes running out and runs to uh, Ravenguard and picks him up and begins to walk with him out with his arm over her shoulder. And they get to here. No, actually, they get to here. That is the end of that round. Um, this is a very, very intense fight. Um, is there... Uh, do we want to take our break here? And welcome back to this insane battle. Um, we've had a few things change in the break. Uh our uh, lovely uh, Falkron, the cleric, and Persephone, the bard, have some things they've got going on with their uh, small business. Um, hopefully, we'll get Falkron back before the end of the game, but we might not. Um, but we should definitely have Persephone back before too long. 
Uh, she has to quickly drive out somewhere and then drive back, but she is listening and she's going to be telling us what to do. So she won't see her face, but she'll be telling us what her actions are. So we are at the yeah. top of this next round with Eastland. So Sean, what just appeared in front of me? What is this thing? Um, so it is a insect-like creature with orange eyes, multiple limbs, and it's kind of clattering its teeth and it's got a long trident. Um, it doesn't strike you as a particularly devil-like or demon-like, um, just looking at it. Um, are you proficient in religion? I am not. All right. Then I can't, I can allow you to try, um, if you can think of something that you could roll that might give you an inclination of what this could be, um, you're welcome to roll it, but that will be your action. That would be my action. Okay, but it's, it can't see me. I am hidden from it. Is that correct? So uh, I need to disengage. You're... Your stealth roll, I believe, was, yes, high enough. It does not know you're there. Okay. And, and just before you go, um, are we okay with where the windows are in the overlay? Oh, we're not, because you obviously think. Um, so if... So Samus is usually first. No. So Samus, if you turn on and off... You got it. And then Peter, if yep. you can turn your other your phone on and off. On, rather. Oh, who's that? There we go. You good? Yeah. We, All should, right. we should be. Hang on. Let me just double check. Yeah, we are good. We're good. Okay. Excelente. Okay. Uh, then Eastland will take a step back uh, uh, against the wall and uh, will shoot the insect looking creature in front of her. Surprise! Hmm? You have advantage because I didn't know you were there. Uh, bit of a delay. 15. 15, I believe, is not enough. It day six, day six. Goes yeah, off of its. Use... Uh, I have to use the D6 before you know whether or not it is a success. All right. Okay, uh, then I'm going to use my movement, um, the rest of my movement. To, I can't move my, uh, my my character. I also can't adjust my health points. Just so you know, Sean. Um, um, you can't move your character. I, I got it. I got it. The, the, the movement thing is fine now, but I cannot adjust my health points. I have not been able to. That I is can do it on very my strange. Sheet. I don't know why. You can't click on the thing and just edit it. It's not letting me change. You must have made it so you couldn't do that. Okay, well. I'll fix as it long later. As, you're keeping track I... of it, as long as you're keeping track of it somewhere, then I that's am. Fine. I've got it on my character sheet. Okay. Um, so uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and then with my bonus action, I'm going to dash in this direction. Uh, can I jump um, off without a... All right, so you stepped up right in front of it, right? I, was, I started here, mm -hmm. and then I took a step back because it couldn't see me, and that's where I shot from. All right, so that's technically not using stealth correctly. Oh. You have to you have to attack from stealth. If you move out of cover, then you have broken stealth. Now, we're going to let it go uh, for now, but that would have meant then that you would have needed to use your bonus action to disengage instead well, of dash. Okay, then I'll just use my 30 feet of movement. And, okay. Uh, okay, that's the end of my turn. Cool. Uh, that will bring us to Gideon Lightward. Hmm. Gideon Lightward walks, hops down next to you, Silas, doesn't pay any attention to you at all, and steps over here. As he does, he moves out of the blades, which do the damage, which almost instantaneously heals. He is does not seem to have taken hardly any damage at all based on the attacks that have come to him. You may take an attack of opportunity as he leaves your threatened space. I will do so with my... Elven Glaive. 
Rolling for 17 to hit. 17 is a hit. Doing 13 points of magic damage. 13 points of magic damage. And just as, as a glance, you mentioned that he is continuing, his skin is stitching back together and he doesn't mm-hmm. seem to be taking damage. Does he seem to take damage? 13 points magic? Yes, as you slash into him, it, there's a large uh, gash that appears in his chest and he looks down at it and sort of snarls at you as he walks past. And he gazes at Persephone, who needs to make a... Saving throw, okay. Just a second, let me get everybody up here. What kind of saving throw? The good kind. Yeah. Um, just a second here. Um, yes, what kind of uh, advantages and so forth do you have going on, Persephone? For what stat? Uh, I would, this is more about... Um, Inspirations, Bardic Inspirations, and oh, things that you've been I, have, I do have Inspiration, so I would like to use that. All right, so you will use Inspiration on this saving throw. It is a Constitution saving throw at advantage from Persephone. Someone would roll me a... a uh, she has ro- you've rolled an 18, which means Yay. you have succeeded right. in beating the DC. However, you still take half damage... And it is 13 points of uh, necrotic damage. Wow, that is one point more than I had, and I am down. Mm, Persephone is unconscious. Um, you feel a tickle in the back of your head, Silas, as you slash into it and see that it has done hardly any damage to Gideon. There is a feeling of hopelessness that threatens to overwhelm you for a moment, and you feel a hand on the back of your neck, almost as if someone is lightly moving their fingers through your hair. You could save them, Silas. You hear a voice. Which voice is that that I hear? That seems to be the voice of Glazia. That is the end of... His turn. Um, I'm not going to go through the trouble of moving this nimbus of light around him, but it does follow him. <sighs> that will bring us to pers- uh, to Falkran. The moment while I get this character sheet up. Uh, okay, before that happens. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Pixie again, we have oh to roll God. for inspiration. <laughs> <I'll> r- <laughs> I'm going to roll good this it. time. I'm gonna I've already got it. This time it's mine. Ready? I'm gonna roll good this time. I know it's gonna. I get rolled a three. I, I'll roll for Persephone. Thank I you. got a rock. Oh god! Oh, I didn't get it. It's gotta be Silas again. I haven't Silas. rolled above a six for one of these ever. I don't think I have either. <laughs> so oh, you, you won a few. Come on, you I, know that. I won one for getting an eight. So <laughs> terrible that the guy with one hit point got inspiration. No, oh I'm glad God. you got the it. The world is so unfair. I'm glad you got ugh, it. Ugh. So thank you very much, Pixie. Much, much appreciate you. All right, so that used Persephone. So that's Locke. That's that. And there's Falkrin. All right, Falkrin's turn. Oh, my goodness. All right. Don't First, Falkrin sends Steve up to um, attack this zombie horde there. Come on, come on, come on. There is it. There it is. So I'll just do one of these. He only rolled a three, plus his thing is not going to be enough. The uh, hammer comes down, and as it does, the horde sort of parts somewhat, and it smashes into the ground. And then the horde comes back together as the, the spiritual weapon flies out of it. Falkron. I think it's got to be a healing word. Oh. If he's got it. He can't end bonus action attack with the Steve. He can't do it and bonus action attack with the Steve. Oh, that's bad DM playing. Mm, well. Um, 
He would do that first, though, wouldn't he? That would have been a smart thing to do. Um, eh, yeah, since it missed, I'll say that that didn't happen. Just because I know that's what Falcon would have done. Would have healing worded Persephone. Persephone, you've been healed for nine points of healing. Awesome. So you are at nine. You are no longer unconscious, but you are prone. Surrounded by zombies. Nah, she's right. not, so Falcon she's not does prone. that with she's his. She's been held up. She's been propped up by the zombies. <laughs> she's done that with um, her healing word for bonus action, and her action is going to be Toll the Dead on Mr. Man. Uh, ooh, with a 22. That is a hit. Ooh, let's see that save. Come on, fail that save. Let's can we see. Can we give inspiration to fail the save? I know we can't. He's... We can't. <laughs> it is a uh, wisdom save. He's yeah, he a has a wise no guy. No, he's not. He has a wise enough. guy. Not enough. He took the damage. Ooh, 22 points of necrotic damage. Yowza. Can't you do that with inspiration? No, you can't, can you? Can't Make give. someone fail a throw? No, no, you can't, no, no. no. You can't do disadvantage. No, you can't As give disadvantage. Falkron holds out her hand, and in, there's a boom that sounds um, around, and you see this necrotic energy uh, well up around Gideon, and he sort of stops for a second, and then he puts his hands down and seems to bathe in it as it cascades over him, doing no damage at all. That is the end of Falkron's turn. Lulu attacks the horde, she runs into it with her tusks. Persephone, where are you? She misses. That will bring us to little Jax. Okay. Uh, I will... 5, 10, 15, 20. Bonus action, hide. So I don't think I was hidden enough. It's going to be a 1. Oh my god, that's so near. It was close. <laughs> 18. <laughs> 18. You're good. Uh, I will step out to there. Uh, and I will shoot Gideon. Very well. Has he got Has he got better perception than an 18? Uh, he has a plus, two to his, a plus 7 to his wisdom. So I'll, I'll take that. It does not have nine. a better than 18. Come on. <laughs> Almost. Oh <laughs> my god. 17 to hit. 17 is a hit. 21 Good roll. As the arrow comes towards him, this purple energy that's around him seems, a <laughs> seems to slow the arrow a bit, but it still manages to pass Hello? through and comes at him, and he <laughs> moves to knock it out of the way. How much damage you do? Oh, wait, there's no way you can roll that. Okay. So he takes that much damage. He looks down at this bolt in his chest, looks up at you, uh, Jax, and you see a bing glint in his eye. And I say, it was me, I stole your book. <laughs> and then I disengage, go back around the corner. I don't disengage, I just use the rest of my uh, to go back All right, the um, so he needs to make a constitution save from that. Come on, fail it. He's good. And that will bring us to Locke. Locke! So, okay. Locke is standing at the window. He looks over at Gideon. And he begins to do a little dance. And he does a sort of a... He puts his hands up and he does a sort of a, a prance back and forth. It says, Hmm, isn't this interesting? <laughs> never, never see a tabaxi doing a dance like this before, have you? And he casts Enthrall on Gideon. Uh, let's see. You look like an idiot. <laughs> a whisper. Well, then I guess he just won't do it then. So Jax is dancing. He's hidden behind the wall. He's like grinding up against the wall. So it hits all enemies within 60 feet. Oh, God. Okay. Lots to take care of here. Um, all right, so he casts. 
So here's the problem, though. According to his character sheet, he only has a third level spell left, which means that he would have to cast Enthrall at third level, but it's not showing up as an option. Is there a reason why Enthrall can't be upcast? It thoughts that for I guess um, it doesn't unless do it's any- a racial trait or something. But usually, if it's a learned spell, it can upcast. Yeah, anything can be upcast. It just won't do any difference. <laughs> it it has no higher level. It has no. So, so but he all. could still use the slot. Yes, yeah. he could expend the slot. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so he, he uses just, the it, slot. Just has no extended or bonus attributes. Sixty feet radius. Okay, so that's going to take care of everything, I believe. Uh, it's not going to make it. It's not going to hit the. Okay, he steps forward, so it does hit everything. Um, as he would know. Yay, so Rico! Be- he, I mean, he begins, he begins to dance in between the um, the statues. Going, look at me! <laughs> and um, all right, Hyphen so, is not thrilled to have that attention brought in immediately next to him. But <laughs> well, let's hope it pays tough. off. <laughs> All right, so lots of saves to make. First, the Mesoloth that is right next... Lots of saves next, to fail, you meant. They right all next fail. to Falkron, and that is at advantage. Sorry, Locke, I'm doing it. Um, that we'll see. Okay. All right, the first Mesoloth fails... So that means it is getting ready to attack Falkron and it stops and turns towards Locke and looks at it with a sort of a twitching, strange expression on its face. Um, thank you, Silas. Mm. Okay. Disadvantage ring a failed save, the target has disadvantage on wisdom perception checks and made to perceive any creature other than you until the spell ends or until the target can no longer hear you. So he keeps making noises and such, and the uh, Mesoloth turns to look at him. The zombies. So this, was a f- this one is enthralled. Let me give a thing up there. Um... Enthralled. This group of zombies is also enthralled. Do they start dancing like, you know? I don't know. They just sort of look at him and just looking at him. The uh, one that is around Persephone is not enthralled. Gideon is not enthralled. And the last Mesoloth. The natural one and a six is enthralled. So that takes care of his turn, What's, and he is concentrating. What is the summary of all that? <laughs> so, all right. So all the creatures that can see him are all um, the, the ones that have failed are watching him, and they have um, disadvantage, they have disadvantage on wisdom checks to perceive any creature other than Locke until uh, it can no longer hear him or until it doesn't look like it actually has concentration requires concentration does it? Nope it It just is going on it's lasting a minute and so if anybody wants to hide um, these things are the ones that are um, enthralled will have disadvantage on detecting you speaking on behalf of Reek what oh what but Undead can't be charmed, can they? Uh, depends on the undead. Depends on the undead. Okay. It depends uh, on the undead. I was, I I was going to suggest. That. I'm pretty sure that these things—they're they're, really—they're really pathetic. These. Knowing Rico, after Locke did that, I'm sure he would hide behind Typha if he has any movement left. And okay. I say that I say that not at Typha. I say that. Having played in Rico's games, he is you DM are, sponsored by us. Indeed. Um, sorry to interrupt, Scott, but I just double checked. Uh, they are immune to to charm. This just so, in. 
This just in. So the zombies are not. So they all over. looked, but then they looked yeah. back. Right. So <laughs> the Mesoloths are both enthralled, but nobody else is. Okay. That is the end of Locke's turn. Um, Typhon. All righty. Good gravy. Good gravy indeed. Um, I will have my imp use a help action, and then I will sort of back up thinking um, uh, Jax has the right idea here, and I will cast my chill touch at Advantage. Uh, 25 to hit. 25 is a hit. Um, it is 7 damage, which I guess it probably... Doesn't do damage, huh? It's necrotic, right? Yeah. Yeah, so again, he goes around him and he just sort of takes it and... <laughs> Anything else, Typhon? I will look towards um, both Eastling and Jax and I will say, um, I have some of him suppressed. Unload on him. Do as much damage as you can, quickly. And I right. will duck around the corner. Okay. Ular Ravenguard goes. He rolls a d4. The positive energy stays up. Persephone. Persephone. But she gave a message. Up. Did she? Yes. She relayed uh, that quote I want to dash up to Gideon. Right. Oh, there we go. And she doesn't yeah. even have to dash. She's really close to him. Yeah, she so doesn't I'm even have to get... assuming she's going to unload with some of those fancy moves. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so she stands up from prone, using half her movement to do so. She has... So that's... So she's got three squares left. One, two, three... So she can move to there, right up to Gideon, but she's still being somewhat engulfed by these uh, these uh, zombies. And she uses... Perhaps she should use a sword, yes, no? Yes, she is going to use her uh, rapier. She's going to use bardic inspiration to do... And hold on, she's back. Yes, what is she doing? Persephone? Am I in the middle of attacking? You are. You're in the middle of attacking, yes. You, you okay. walked up to uh, Gideon, and you are attacking with your rapier, assuming. And, yes, please. And um, do are those flying flies still right next to him, like near me? Um, no, the, the Mesoloth uh, appears to be enthralled by um, Locke from his dance, and there's one right next to Silas, and then there's one right next to Falkron. The, um, but the um, zombies are right next to you. Difficult terrain. So I can get, I could do, I could hit more than one person. Yeah, it was difficult terrain. Um, oh, I didn't count that right, did I? So she stood up from prone. Oh, you did. You did. You she stood up right. from prone. So that was half her movement. So that would have been six. So she would have three feet left, three squares left. One, two, three. She can move to there. You are just out of range, Persephone. I'm oh, afraid man. You, you could you could use. I'm out of range of everything. You're out of you're out of range of Gideon. Could you could attack she, the zombies. Could she dash and use a bonus action? She could dash and use a dagger attack. In order to use the dagger attack, she has to take the attack action. Uh, you always have vicious mockery. So I'm actually going to cast um, hideous laughter. Okay and see if that at least breaks his concentration and stops him from um, casting another spell for a second. This laughter is... You'd know that's a charm spell, so it probably wouldn't work on Undead. She could, also, on you, undead. She could also make a mundane attack on the um, zombies and increase her speed by using a flourish, but that's a little complicated. Oh, I could do my mobile attack, you're right. And that would give me 10, that would give me 10 more feet, so let's do yep. that. Okay, yes. so you use one of the Bardic Inspirations to use Mobile Attack. I will Team roll the eight for you. What the hell was that? A car? I'm outside. Oh my goodness. All right, so you get another um, feat. You are able to come up to Gideon. You attack him with still a, a hairy sword. 
The sword of the swashbuckler. The sword of the swashbuckler. So you hit AC 16 plus, is the two to damage or the two to attack? It's the, wow, I don't know. Damage. I thought it was to attack. It's to damage, but, yeah. Uh, okay. But you hit with the attack, so that is 15 points of piercing that you have done. Do you wish to... Um, that's, that's magic, isn't it? Do you yes. wish to um, use your dagger as well? Yes, absolutely. All right. Wait a second. Did you, did you just take... Nope, you had to use Bardic... You had to use a bonus action to do Bardic Inspiration. So you can't do that. So okay. if you hit him with your rapier, you're good. And what did it look like? Did it look like all, everything else that doesn't hurt him as much? No, this one definitely hurt him. Awesome. Silas. Do you have to use the the bonus action to get that? As a bonus action, take the attack. You weapon attacks. You can spend what you can deal. Oh no, no, that that's for just bardic inspiration. Got it. So you do have that attack. So I already rolled for it. It was a sixteen. It hit. It did seven points of piercing, but that did not seem to do as much damage as the rapier did. Okay. <sighs> okay, that will bring us to Silas. Uh, just out of curiosity. Last round, when he attacked me, you described that when I was hit with the purple necromantic energy, it flowed into the scar in my hand. Mm -hmm. And then this round, Glacia spoke to me. That's right. Such a bitch. Um, I'm tapped out. I'm... All done. Ass, see, bass. You have um, a target right in front of you. It doesn't matter, though. He doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to take the same path down that Gideon did. Okay. And I'm still in range of the uh, creature, the Mesoloth. Right. So even if he notices that I move out of his range, I'm, I'm still in his range. Um. I've got I one. just want to make sure you understand, just because he's been enthralled does not mean he cannot see you. If you hide, yes. he's at disadvantage to see you. However, walking right in front of him, he does definitely see you. Yes, well, I'm, yes. Okay. I'm just saying I don't provoke an attack of opportunity. You do not. Uh, sitting on my one hit point that my HP has not updated. And I can't edit it. Like Much like Rim earlier, I can't actually edit the icon. It's so strange. I don't know why. Yeah. But I'm, I'm sitting on one hit point. Um, so it doesn't really matter. Silas has seen everything that he can see. I'm going to make an attack roll. How, how damaged does Gideon look? Not damaged very much at all. Not damaged very much at all? Nope. Maybe a fourth. A fourth of damage, so he's still mm -hmm. at three quarters health, roughly. Yep. So he's brushing us off. Uh, I'm going to reach out in my mind as I attack. And I'm going to... <laughs> with a crit! Very nice. With a crit. I'm going to speak out black back to Glacia. And speaking out to Glacia with that one attack, I'm just going to tell her that she'll never have me. It's quote, you'll never have me and you'll never have my friends. All right. And then I'm going to reach out inside myself to do damage. But before I do, I'm reaching into my heart and I'm reaching out to Vandria, Vandria Gilmadrith, the goddess who I am disconnected from, the one that abandoned me in my mind as a paladin and left to me to my own devices. I'm going to call on her and ask her to empower me now. Ooh. I have done everything that I can I have done everything in my abilities, and I have used everything that I could. And now I'm going to ask her to 
to bless me, to give me this divine smite. Holy crap. And so I'm going you to are specific, roll you're specifically damage. reaching into yourself to find this energy in yourself? No, I'm, I'm, I'm tapped out. I've gotten everything I can. I've used every ability I could. The only thing I could do is uh, make a greater attack roll, and I can't do greater than a crit. Right. Um, but I am going to do everything I can. I'm going to reach out. I've already reached inside myself, and I'm reaching beyond myself to her. To Roll see a charisma this moment. A charisma saving throw with advantage, please. Oh, I was just gonna say, is there any way we can help with that? But maybe. Nineteen. Nineteen. Add a, add a D six. Oh yeah. This is a D six that you had, right? Twenty three. This is oh. my yeah. This is my D six hundred inspiration. Uh, that cannot be transferred. Oh. Well, still a 19 a 19 Christmas 19, save. yeah. I have I have inspiration, but I already rolled with advantage. You told me to roll with advantage, advantage right. so 19. Okay. Um, all right. I think something went wrong. <laughs> Your peripheral vision fades and darkness closes in on you as you concentrate. The groans of the undead and the desperate cries of your companions fade as you feel soft warmth flowing over you like a lover's caress. A spasm of pleasure thrills across your nerves, starting with your left hand and ending somewhere near your heart. The air is heavy with spices and sweat and blood and your breath catches in your throat as a form takes shape in front of you. It can only be Glazia, her body undulating with lust, her arms reaching to embrace you. Finally, you admit the truth. I know you, Silas, despite what you say. Come to me, take what's yours, revel in luxurious desire and the power that comes from fulfilling that desire in every way imaginable. What do you do? I turn away. Glass there's is a, not who I called out to. There's a presence deep within you you feel it, it's almost as if it's being obscured by something. What do you do? I'm going to pray to Vandria, saying, I am beset. I have found within myself all that I can. I have taken myself to a level of physical skill on my own. I have found within myself the ability to do amazing things. But I am still your soldier, Vandria. I am still pledged to you. Please help me. The light begins to increase. You feel it spreading from your heart, pushing against the darkness that Glazia has put there. And a voice that sounds like Elila screams out, Silas, no! But the sound is carried away by the rush of wind that you feel churning around you. Glazia freezes her seductive smile fading to a snarl. You dare to defy me? So be it. Return to the tepid affection of your elf bitch 
Your soul is still mine, and I promise you will suffer. Have a taste. A searing pain lances over you as the left side of your body erupts in flame. The blackness around you shatters into a million pieces and is replaced by blinding radiance. At its center stands the statue of Vandria, unbroken and glowing like the sun on the sea. For the briefest of moments, it seems as if her arm is outstretched, desperately reaching for you. You feel the divine energy that you generated from your own soul, straining for release. What do you do? I reach out with both my arms to embrace the light to embrace my goddess. Like a river finding the sea, your light connects with Vandria's. A feeling of welcoming affection wells up around you. Power courses through you. The vision fades, and you snap back to the battlefield with more clarity and energy than you have felt in days. Roll 3d4 plus 4, please. That is... Is 14. Everyone within a 60 foot radius of you receives 10 points of healing. Nice. And we will return to our fight. Uh, Silas, roll your smite. It works. Yeah. It works. <laughs> Yes. On a crit. Wow. Oh my gosh. Oh my so, goodness. I don't remember how to. <laughs> <laughs> you use a you use a spell slot. We've yeah, there got you go. Paladin back. Okay, so it's it's just gonna be two d eight because I never made it past level three for a paladin. Uh, ha! Uh, inspiration oh. on that. Gonna oh. use inspiration on that. <laughs> Uh, yes, I'll allow it. Uh, that's better. Um, Much better. Now, you get to roll that again because it's a crit. Oh, do I? Yep. Yeah. Okay. It's Brittany, bitch, and she's back. Ah, that's, I'm still not used to this whole paladin thing. All right. But so I've got 18 on top of the 15 that you just did, right? Uh... Yep, uh, 18 on top of 15. So that's 33? Yes. And then it's all magic. Well, it's all radiant. Not all radiant, but... Um, divine. Divine. It's, so un it's undead as well. Another you bring... Yeah, that's right. It does more damage because it's undead. Oh, my God. Another 2d8. So, uh, another 2d8. That's seven. Um, I'm infected by the ones. So but that's another five. Another five. So fifth. Got it. You so slash that? into this, and it, you were out of time for a second, and you had begun the swing as you had this vision from uh, Glazia and Vandria, and the blade comes down. As it does, you look down and you see that your hand is scorched and black. There's scabs and uh, horrible scarring and blackness going up your arm. It's almost also affected your armor and your clothes, and it's all on your shoulder. But as you connect, there's a vast explosion of radiant energy, and Gideon screams in rage and turns to face you. I'm going to axe and search. <laughs> but before you do that, everyone roll a d20. <laughs> Thanks to Pixie again, we've been given a d6 oh inspiration. My god. Got an 11. Uh, I can't do it. Rip. Rim, will you roll for me? I will roll for you. I've got 11 as well, but I give mine to Silas for that. Ah, oh, damn you, Yislin. Oh, you it, just would give... be the, it would be the dark elf woman who I suspect of treachery. <laughs> That's actually on behalf of Persephone because I still have my D6. That okay, I... I'll take Persephone doing it then. She deserves it. <laughs> um, uh, quick reference, DM. Uh, I was at one hit point. Was I healed or just everyone you else were. around me? Okay. You were healed. 
And that was the 3d4 plus 4, you said. Correct. Which would be 14. 14. Oh, yeah. So everybody takes 14, not 10. Instead of 10. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. With with that, having uh, felt the divine energy flowing in from our esteemed audience, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to action search. Okay. And swing Oranian again. And Have you still got inspiration? Because, yeah, I didn't use it last time. I, I I did use it. I didn't use it. Yeah, you just used it. I just used it. Um, I'm going to make a precision attack. I'm gonna. I can do that after the roll, but I'm just going to level up. That that's my plan. Uh, and crap, that's all I got. So let me make that swing with Iranian the Moon Touch Glaive, rolling to hit a. 13, but I already said that I would roll mm -hmm. a d8. If it does not hit, I get to make the choice. Um, it did not hit. 19 total. 19 does hit. And that is doing nine points. I don't know. Yeah, nine points of it's magic damage. Magic damage. Got it. Wow. That was one hell of a turn. Anything else from you, Silas? Is he still standing? He's still standing. Some inspired words that tell him he will lose. Or End of turn. Right. All right. This creature turns to fight you. I'm a paladin. I'm a paladin. I'm a paladin. I'm a paladin. I'm a it paladin. reaches out with its claws hitting AC 17. Six I'm points of slashing. Now. I'm going to die now. I'm going to die now. It's AC 23 points. with nine points of piercing. I'm dead. I do believe that drops you. You are unconscious. <laughs> All right. That is its turn. The other Mesoloth uh, turns away from Locke and attacks Falkron. Let's see here. Claws her. Did that only last 22. Turn? Eight points of slashing. Trident. The trident misses. She blocks it with her shield, but it took 10 points of slashing damage. Did he need Let's to make see. a con save? Um, he does. Thank you for that. Was it 50 damage or something? Wasn't it? it was a tremendous amount. Um, 38. Yeah, he would have to roll very high in order to not... Um, 19. And that. So let's see what he rolls. He rolled an 11. The purple light surrounding him fades. All right, that will bring us to the zombie hordes who are not enthralled. The zombie attacks Persephone. Missing. Yay. The other, other horde. Mm, comes next to it and attacks Persephone also. Mm. Missing. Which yes. will bring us to Rhea. Rhea continues to move with Uldar Ravengard as she. Oh, there's also one more horde up here. The whole horde comes up, and as it moves into the light surrounding Uldar Ravengard, it begins to bubble and hiss and steam, and you see bits and pieces of it beginning to slough off and fall as it claws its way towards him. It takes that much damage. And then comes up and attacks Rhea. That is a hit. And I suppose as it moved out of Lou's range of attack, she takes an attack of opportunity. She runs into it with her tusk and she hits and does that much damage. It is still up, but it is barely standing. It comes up and it attacks Rhea. And it hit, yeah, it hit her. Okay. Got it. 
Okay. That will bring us to the end of that round and the beginning of the next one. Eastland. Does Ryan look at him? What about? Say that again? Did Raya not get a turn? Did she not? No. Um, let's see. Zombie Horde. Yeah, she goes very last. Sorry. As it comes up, she attacks twice. We've just been gifted another 300. Oh, my God. <laughs> right. She misses both times with those um, attacks. Okay. And that for will the, bring us to this. For the new round, then, everyone roll a d20 who hasn't got a d6 inspiration. Thank you very much, Manx Works. Much appreciated. Do I get to roll even though I'm unconscious and will die soon reunited with yes, my goddess? Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. Uh, uh, I got a 16. Not many people understand this, but if Luanshi wants to swoop in and save me, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Uh, has everyone rolled who hasn't got a d6 already? Uh, yeah, okay. I, yeah. I won I won that. I hand it straight to Silas, though. If that's possible. I'm dead. I'm dead. Yeah, but I'll, if for a... a All for right. A, so that takes care of that. Eastland. Thank you All very right. much, Max. Uh, I'm going to use my movement and uh, bonus action to dash to uh, this location. And I'm going to... Uh, Use my advantage to take a shot at Gideon. What um, what path did you take to run there? Uh, I went. Sorry, I, I did the I did the arrow. You didn't see it. Um, I was here, and I came out of this direction. Got it. Yep, you're good there. Um, so uh, I'll use my advantage to shoot at Gideon. Or that's a hit. Ah. Uh, he's Ooh. engaged, so 16 magic damage. Right. As the arrow comes, he manages to knock it out of the way. But as it hits the ground, it scratches his leg a bit. So he took that much damage. Right. Anything else from you, Ethan? Uh, my last five feet of movement will be behind the statue. Right. Gideon Lightward looks down at the unconscious form of uh, Silas, turns back to Persephone, and his gaze pours into her. Uh, Persephone will need to make a constitution save. All right. Persephone, will you use any of your inspiration on this? Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Uh, I'll use my. I only have my D6 left, so I right. will use that. Um, I forgot to roll for you last. Let me roll. Well, never mind. It's already taken care of. Um, no, no. I already had the D6, so. Okay. Got it. All right. So, con save. I got so it. You uh, have rolled a natural one on your con save. Um, oh, I'm a D6 actually rolling myself right now. I'm home. Oh, so. oh okay. Um, so well, then it's going to be better than the three that I just rolled. <laughs> Yeah, I got a seven, which is um, better. Um, better. And then I'll add my d6. <laughs> I don't think it's going to help. Roll. <laughs> so an eight. Damn an it. Eight. An eight is not enough. As, um, I, hate I this will guy. just say, as he gazes at you, you see that the wounds he sustained in the last round do not heal. Um, nice. He looks at you and again you feel yourself growing weak and the light fades um with the uh, half damage of what you just took i believe you are unconscious with a 16 points of necrotic damage yep i am right. i'm out so you you faint in front of him and he gra he uh, catches you as you fall and he throws you into the uh swarm of undead just i don't want to die that is the end of his turn. Oh my <laughs> God. Hold on, I'm gonna say it for for you. I'm just gonna everybody look at my screen here. Everybody, everybody, if we could all just uh, if we could all just agree on that. Uh, we've got a new yeah. patron oh in the house. God. Apparently, we we're, what did we she are, do? She's not. We 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 don't need Vandria. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, hey hey hey, 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 h
Come on! But apparently, I'm apparently, to kill these people. Apparently, Pixie Quinn has evolved. She is now a patron. Uh, okay. She is accepting applications for Warlock. Uh, right. You can you can contact her at uh, at Pixie Quinn on Twitch, and you can become a Warlock of Pixie Quinn. Uh, there's a special power to gain massive amounts of inspiration to all of those around you. <laughs> or in this case, a hidden you can, potion. You, you can find her in Yon Cast in the Shade Lands, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pixie. You are far too generous. Thank you very much. Uh, right. Sean, we get a healing potion. Okay. <laughs> Sean's like, oh, shit, it's such a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, it's good and bad. He's, he's trying to get to the other cut scene where we're all dead. <laughs> 86. Uh, so that's a greater hearing version. Um, uh, and the it imp has it, in, it? The imp has it. That a feed it it appears in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It appears in Peter's pack. Who, sorry? Gotcha. Oh, Peter's. The greater healing Typhon. potion has disappeared in Typhon's pack. All right. That will bring us to Falkron. I believe Falkron has one more healing word left. We will see. Remember when I was nice to you, Falkron, when I was alive? <sighs> Who will it be? Who will it be? Can he see Persephone? He can't perceive her. That's that's also, not. Yeah, he that's... also just saw like Silas do a crap ton of damage. So if he's being like, I don't know, that's who I would think he would save. Right now. All right. You you so you you think he would save um, Silas or who? Who's the other? No, he would. Or if if Persephone's uh, down, Persephone is closer. Just went down. Yes, I, I, also, I agree. His life. Okay. I agree. Uh, Falkron casts Healing Word. Let's see. Well, did he really Going physically to a cross eye here? Yes, he. It was flavor because she was already engulfed in the thing. So, if, but, if it's flavor, uh, it might help me. <laughs> if it was just flavor. Why? Because if she moves, then I won't get a sneak. I don't understand. Oh. <laughs> because you're right there? Yeah, um... I mean, it was flavor. So, but she's she's prone. I'm gonna say that you can't, um... You can't hide behind her while she's prone. No, no, no I'm not gonna hide behind her, but she, she is still threatening while prone, so... No, she's unconscious. Yeah, but if he's gonna heal him, word her... I'm clutching, Sean. I'm clutching at straws. If he's got a healing word, uh, surely she's threatening. Yeah, but... Okay. All right. Yep, I'll allow it. So that is eight points of healing on Persephone. Thank God for that. And that is the end of... Let's see, that's a healing answer. Then he does... Does Falkron have any movement? Yes, Falkron has movement. Falkron can't do Toll the Dead the way she likes because there is... Yeah, so she just attacks the Mesoloth in front of her. Spiritual weapon? Anything? Steve? Working on it. Working on it. Okay. Working on it. All I'm, right. I'm 19 is a hit. So that is... Got it. Okay. And then she summons the spiritual weapon to come up and attack she bonus as well. Action. She bonus action. Oh, she bonus action. Thank you. You can still move it, though, right? Nope. Nope. Can't even move it. Got it. All right. Lulu goes. Lulu once again attacks this group of zombies with her tusks. She hits. Four points of piercing. They are nearly gone. That will be the end of Lulu's turn. Jax. Okay. It's exactly 60 feet. So I'm going to move and dash. Okay. From where I am to here. So which, okay. was, which is where Persephone is. Yes. Yep. I was going to go back between in her legs. 
I would be going. For, uh, she she I'm is gonna... she is prone, so yeah. you can't. So she's not providing any cover. Is that no, no, difficult I'm terrain? Is that difficult yeah, terrain gonna, for a small? It is. I'm going to acrobatics over that to land there. All right, <clears> make that check and stab. Come on, please don't fail me now. 22 acrobatics. 22 is enough. So you come flipping over and you leap into the air and you do a dagger. Of He's tiny little dagger. Boink, boink, on the top of these zombies and you land right in front of Persephone and you attack. For 25 to hit. 25 is a hit. Come on, please. 24 magical damage. 24 magical damage. <laughs> Oh, no! No! I've got your book. <laughs> I've seen your dirty up. faults. Anything <laughs> else, Jax? <laughs> I can't do anything. All right. Literally, <laughs> Lock. All right. Lock. Let's see here. Lock. Mm. Lock uses his feline grace ability. I believe that gives him... Double check to see what that does. Where is it? 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 Racial traits. That's the wrong character sheet. That's why I'm not finding it. Falkran doesn't have that. Falkran has. There it is. Free line agility. Move when you're trying to come, you can double your speed until the end of your turn once you. All right, so yeah, plenty of speed. Locke leaps off the um, the thing. <laughs> what is it called? Leaps off this uh, this wall right here. It comes running up and um, moves to here. Let's see. I'll say moves to here, right next to Islin, and shoots Gideon. Uh, wait. Sorry, Sean. That's no, an extra actually, six damage. An extra six damage. Thank you. Um, let me double check this the range here on the movement. I think. Yeah, that's enough movement to get to Silas. So he comes diving over Silas and reaches out with his paws and touches yeah. him with uh, cure wounds as he lands nimbly on the other side of Silas right in front of the Mesoloth. So that is a cure wounds. He had that left? He does. He's got it left. That's eight points of cure wounds. Oh, thought he used his last spell slot. He For used him. his last um, uh, bardic inspiration. And uh, he he wanted to cast Enthrall, but he didn't have any second level spells left. So oh, he had to cast it level good. three. So he oh. still has level one spell slots left. So I'm Fine. up but prone. You are prone. Yes, you are no longer unconscious. You are prone. And that will bring us to Typhon. Oh my god, you guys. Okay. Gotcha. So good. Um It's not a lot I can do. My original plan is kind of um superseded by a lot of awesomeness. And that is okay. Um but I'll just do it anyway just in case critical misses or anything. I will repeat the Help action, and then use chill touch once again. On Gideon. On Gideon. That's necrotic damage, right? Correct. And it also prevents him from regaining hit points. Gotcha. So I have a 25 to hit. That's a 25 is a hit. So in case Silas misses, he can't heal on the start right. of his turn. So the damage, there is no damage done to him by the spell. Correct. All right. Uldar Raven Guard rolls a d4. Oh, the Nimbus surrounding him changes from radiant to evil lightning. And oh, Rhea ooh, and Rhea and Lulu. Lulu both take damage from it. And Lulu is oh no! Oh, that is very bad for Lulu. Don't you dare! I will quit this game. <laughs> <laughs> Lulu cries out as this energy comes around her and she, just, ah! and she falls back, uh, her wings somewhat singed, and she limply flies back up in the air and says, Ow! And Rhea. No one cares about Rhea, huh? 
Okay. I see. I, I said Rhea and Lulu. I said Rhea and Lulu. Okay. Jeez. Rhea did not take as much damage as Lulu did. That will bring us to somebody. Somebody tell me who it brings us to. Persephone. Persephone, you are prone. You are surrounded by zombies. Jax is standing <laughs> above you like a hero. Um, Jax and that's is what I, standing above you like a hero. In his eyes, yeah. When I wake back up from the abyss, I see Jax in all like his glory standing above me like a hero. He doesn't wear um, pants. He's right. wearing nothing. I will use um, oh, my defensive flourish mm-hmm. to attack Gideon. Mm-mm. Okay. I'm trying to hit the button here. Um, all right. With uh, 26 to hit. 26 is a hit. And uh, there's an extra unit damage. Normally, it just shows me my damage when I do that. Ah, there we go. Apologies. I'm uh, just glad you're here. Four, five, six, seven, eight damage. Got it. And um, instead of my dagger, I'm going to use my uh, bonus action to drink a healing potion. Okay. Um, what's the them. dice for that? Mm-hmm. So, so all right, do. I didn't see. Oh, that's why your uh, your damage. It's uh, all rolling on my. It's all uh, rolling. So, how much damage was it total? Uh, what did I say? Eight, I think. Yeah. Okay. Did you stood up? Correct. Yes. Um, and I didn't go anywhere. What's the die for a normal healing potion? Uh, two d four plus four. Thank you. Okay, that's me. Alrighty. Persephone is done. Silas, you are prone, but alive. Well, I'm going to stand up. Alright, you are no longer prone. <laughs> um, I'm How bad off does Locke look? Just for the record. Look, Locke looks fine. Locke looks, <laughs> Locke's prancing around. Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> He's yeah, freaking man. out. He's just like, what are we doing? I did the whole enthrall thing and nobody hid we should have been running <laughs> but um yeah he looks fine you got a d6 okay. inspiration remember I've got a d6 inspiration on me yep. mm-hmm. okay um I've lost track yeah first I'm just gonna take a swing at Gideon uh using Iranian my moon touched elven glaive for a 16 to hit and if that doesn't hit, is a hit. I'll add it does it is a hit okay yeah it does it hit then I will be doing 11 points of magic damage. Okay. And I'm going to throw a smite in there. Smite. I can't. I don't don't think I have any. I'll show you. Yeah, you should use a spell slot to put a smite in. Oh, can I? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You just burn a spell slot. No, and that's right. I, I, I have been not a paladin for so right. long. Understood. I don't even. I've, I've avoided even looking at my spells. But you are correct. Um, I feel like that's not just happening to you as the player, but to Silas. He's like, oh yeah, <laughs> I can do this shit. Uh. Then yeah, you're right. So let me. Uh, gosh. Let me do a smite. I, I do have smites. Gosh. Uh, wrathful smite? Mm, I would do a bonus action or searing smite bonus action. Uh, gosh, I haven't looked at these in so long. I've been disconnected. Fine smite doesn't need a bonus action, right? You just pop it on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess I'll do that. Divine smite. Because I've got a plan for that, so... 3d8, isn't it? Sorry, sorry guys. It's, no, it's, it's, uh... 
can't even find it. I literally have not looked at this uh, stuff in so long. It's all the way at the end. Uh, 2d8, so 11 points magic damage. Extra and d8. Then six more. Extra d8. He's undead. And extra Ex d8 because he's undead. Extra d8 because he's undead for six more, so 12. 23. 23 points of all magic damage. No! No, you don't understand! Eldra will be overrun! No! The final blow is yours, Silas. Yes! Uh, well, okay. Um, I... On my, on my knees, having been prone, I take Aranian, my elven glaive, stamp it into the ground, pull myself up on it hand over hand, then swinging around, invoke the name Vandria, take you. And then swing through just with a straight lateral strike right across his chest and his unbeating, undead heart. And as it comes across, the blade of the glaive catches a light with fire and burns its way through his flesh. No! <laughs> He explodes in holy light, and the zombie hordes turn to ash and fall. That, my friends, is the end of combat. Holy smokes! Oh my god, I thought we were dead. Oh, There's I, still two mesoloths. At least. Oh, two mesoloths. Yep, sorry. Uh, yeah, so, the to finish. <laughs> the the mesoloths are no. Are no, to, uh, to finish matter. off, I'm going to step out of the range of the Mesoloth, but he okay, might not perceive you. me. It might not perceive me. Mm, oh, you would have had to have hit. Okay, I'm going to take that in, uh, attack of opportunity. See if it see if it goes through. All right, he attacks you with his trident. Please roll less than 17. <laughs> he rolled a 14. How's that? It oh, misses. you know what? Uh, I'm going to use my D6. I think. Oh. That's Rhea's D6. No. That's Lulu's D6. So he rolled a 16. Yeah. Still misses. Okay. And then I am going to, for the first time in 13 sessions or something, I'm going to use Lay on Hands. Oh my goodness. And I'm going to heal Persephone for the full 15 points. Wow. that I possibly can. Wow. That's awesome. The purple haze parts for a second and there's a, a nimbus of light as uh, Silas reaches out with his hand and helps you uh, steady yourself as the dust and ash of these zombies falls around you. His hand comes through, his left hand, and as it comes through, you recoil for a moment because it looks like a blackened claw as it comes through. But you look and you see behind it is Silas's... Uh, calm and encouraging face and he holds your hand and radiant energy pours out of him and into you and you feel your wounds healing. I, I guess you're feeling better. She says to him. Not much. But can and we finish this now? The rule <laughs> of cool for those watching that it is in fact a bonus action and Silas has already used his bonus action, but we're going to give it to him this time. This time. The Mesoloth attacks Locke. Nine points of slashing. And eight points of piercing with its trident. Both hit. So that is a total of 17 against Locke. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm, I might not be all right. That is the end of that Mesoloth's turn. The other Mesoloth attacks Vulcran. Claws. 13 is a miss. Ricochets off her shield. 25. Five points of piercing against Vulcran. That is them. Rhea uh, looks around and she continues to help hold our Raven Guard down the steps. They move double their movement. 
because she's not she uses her action to move but they cannot go very far because they're at half speed because of Uldar Ravenguard that I believe is the end of that round which brings us back to the top with Yislin Yislin is going to hide behind the statue and then uh, pop out and take a shot uh, 18 on the stealth and okay. for her short bow 25 that's a hit they were not aware of you 13 points of uh, against uh, against red the, or blue the one facing uh, lock red one facing lock. okay 13 got it anything else this one uh, yeah, she's actually going to uh, run into the fray and uh, try to draw fire away from Locke. Okay. Islin done. Gideon Lightward is dead. Falkrin. Falkrin attacks the Mesoloth. Falkrin rolls. Quietus. Uh, hitting AC 13, that is not enough. Um, she summons Steve, who comes up and attacks. The 20. Going at 8 plus. Uh, that is not enough to pierce its armor. That will bring us to... Oh, I just didn't need to do that. There we go. That will bring us to Lulu. Lulu. Stay away from my friends! And she runs into the Mesoloth uh, that is attacking um, Valkran. As she does, Valkran's spiritual weapon disappears. And she attacks with her tusks. She misses. That will bring us to Jax. Okay, I move 40 feet to there. I'm sure the other guys have got the other one covered. Um, do you have to climb up 10 feet? Do you still have enough room? Enough? Uh... I'm over here, left. I know, but with the with the the. You know, let me just check. So you were here. I was where Persephone is. 40 feet, but you were, to get up there, you have to climb up 10 feet. Oh, okay. Well, I've still got 10 feet left. Okay, good. I mean, so I, you're good? I've still got 20 foot left. I'm moving and then bonus. Uh, got it. You're good. Um, sorry, I just thought I'd be to try to do it quicker. Um, I will attack the creature from behind. Oh, 15 to hit. 15 is not enough. Really? Really. They're very well armored with chitinous plates. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Let's be done. All right. Anything else? Nope. Yeah, no, you said you're, you're done. Okay. It just made a clattering noise against the chitinous plates. That's right. Um, lock. Um, Mary had a little lamp. Lock takes the disengage action. No. Lock moves to the other side of the Mesoloth and attacks with Stanto. With a plus one bonus because he's flanking with Islin, hits a, a 20, dirty 20. Um, gets the sneak attack against it, finds a way to pierce its chitin, and does that much damage. Why can I not select? There we go. Got it. That is lock done, I believe. Typhon. Have we got Ryan back? Yes, you do. Yes, oh, Falkrin right. has arrived. All right. From the ether. Um, I'm sorry. I don't know if you want me to... No, no, you can turn back on. So, yep. uh, Tess, if you want to turn yours off and on. That should fix it. Uh-oh. Musical chairs. 
That should be nice and simple. There you go. Done. Oh, hang on. I need to... We'll just welcome Falkran back from the wilds of Ohio. <laughs> wild indeed. Wild oh indeed. God. Wacky, wild Ohio. Is Is everything the, the wacky and wildest part of Ohio, in fact. You were out there conversing with Shakespeare, man. Come on. <laughs> right. Uh, it is Typhon's turn. Are we good? Yep. Typhon, what are you up to? Uh, I'm doing my, uh, well, same thing I did the last couple rounds. More chill touch. Let's do it on this one. I think he's been damaged more. He has. Um, I'm doing the thing. Obviously, 18 hits. Yeah. 18 hits. For 18 a is the no. meat to beat. My max damage of 16 wow. necrotic. 16 necrotic damage as this thing riles in pain as the black tendrils of your spell cascade over it. That will be the well end done. of Typhon and in Uldar Ravenguard rolls the D4. With a two, the energy changes back to Radiant. That will bring us to Persephone. Okay. Um, I will move, and if somebody could move for me, please, uh, up to the red. Got it. And do the old-fashioned Rapia Daga uh, attacks that I love so much. Uh, that's a... Come on. 24 to hit. That's a hit. And that's a 9 damage. Got it. Then I say, well done, friend. And then, and it's all you. <laughs> and then, uh, with my dagger, that's a uh, uh, eighteen to hit. Eighteen is the meat to beat. Ah, so it hits, yeah. Mhm. Mm it's different in every game I play. Um, and that's five damage, non-magical. All right. Does that make a difference? I think it might actually. Yes, got it. So the dagger doesn't seem to do as much damage as it would that you would expect. However, it is not looking well. Excellent. That's all Anything I do. else, Persephone? Nope. Silas. Um, going to step in uh, between Islin and Persephone, mm -hmm. two very different people, if ever there was a dichotomy to stand between. And uh, does this thing look hurt at all? <laughs> yes, it does. It looks quite hurt. Parts of its um, armor are hanging off of it. It uh, looks like one of its arms is hanging limply. It is okay. uh, not looking well. well. I'm going to slash at it with a 12 to hit. Hit, which will be six, remember? You got we'll, a D6. You got a D6. Yeah, you have a D6. We'll try the D6 with a one. So one 13 is not enough. 13 still does not meet the AC. So you uh, unfortunately hit part of it, which king ricochets off of its armor. And then I'm all done. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, uh, I'll be all done. All right. The Mezaloth disappears. As does the one fighting Falkron. And now, combat is done. Because when they reappear, no one can see them. Like they you. are fleeing. Combat is finished. That, my friends, is that. Holy Jesus. Moly. Yeah, you better run. What I'm it? going to take one small step towards that, uh, whatever that is, altar, and just sit down, exhausted looking. I'll walk over. But smiling. Well, I'll walk over, fully healed. <laughs> that was fun, wasn't it? I uh, go find Lulu. 
I'm for 70, I was worried. Are you okay? No, but it'll be okay. Does no. anybody have any, has any, does anybody have any healing spells left? I think I do. We've got um, about 500 healing potions. <laughs> <laughs> just appearing in your pack. Just boom, 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 boom. Uh, I will cast heal. Um, come on. Oh, this iPad. Uh, healing word on Lulu. She gets five healing point, uh, hit points Could back. you have fused better? <sighs> Rhea comes walking over with Ular, um, whose arms around her shoulder. She says, I, uh, I don't mean to be rude, but I think we still might have a problem here. And you look and you see the tendrils of energy still extending behind Uldar into the chapel and presumably down into the ossuary, where it is still powering the portal. And if you stop for a second, you can hear a sound coming from somewhere. Ugh. I think it's best we go. I, I, I agree. Locke says, oh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a, a fantastic idea. Uh, back to the cathedral, I suppose. It's uh, better than here. We need to get this thing off of him. I think it's the only way to stop the uh, the, the, the things coming up. I agree, but uh, Islin, can you lead us back as stealthily as you let us here? Uh, we can't get in another fight like that, or we won't make it. I agree, and I highly suggest we carry him. If we continue to shamble at half pace, we're going to take an awfully long time to return. You know, Rim would usually be the one to do something like that. Yeah. Oh, I, I can carry him. Uh, what is, how much can you carry? How much can you carry? Uh... I've got a strength of 16 plus 3. What's the calculation? Um, 16 plus 3? Uh, 16 score, which gives me the plus 3 bonus. Plus 3 bonus. Um, so he's a, a big fellow, and he's also wearing half-plate armor. Um, so he's quite heavy. You could take him out of his armor. Why don't we both carry him? Four hands better than two. Silas, you don't have any, or excuse me, Typhon, you don't have any sort of rotation? Potentially, I just thought of that. I don't know if he would willingly accept the spell, though. Well, he, uh, I was able to get him to go Dimension Door with me. Uh, I think it's just luck. I suppose perhaps it's worth a try. Oh, it will expend me somewhat. Let's see. Um, so, uh, you know, the conditions of the spell say touching a willing creature. Is this right. something I could do? Um, we will see. Uh, at the moment, the energy coming out of him <laughs> is radiant. I will say that he has one more roll before he realizes he's not in combat anymore. It is still radiant. That's as much of a clue as I can give you. Okay, then I will... If I put my hand in it, does it hurt? <laughs> it does not. Okay, good. All right, then I'll, <laughs> <laughs> then I'll walk up and I will cast fly on him. Okay. But uh, I should grab him in case he's out of his mind. You should be able to carry him more easily now. You had a third level spell left? Yeah. Jesus. All right. Okay. So Typhon reaches out, says the words, and Uldar begins to float um, where people are holding him. 
with him flying like that, you're able Whoops. to move at <laughs> your speed. <laughs> the wrong side. Oh my god! Typhon no. annihilates Old Our Raven Guard with a lightning bolt that destroys yeah. him and drives him limb from limb. And the behind the curtain, fall. guys. Keep it behind the curtain. Keep the it behind helmet, the curtain. The helmet falls at your feet. Um, no. Uh, so with with that, you are able to exit the cemetery of El Terrell. And as you do, you see um, creatures crawling out of it, almost like ants that are uh, crawling all over the building and the stained glass as it comes out. Um, they look like uh, many, many of the creatures that you fought in the basement of Lelizier's Elixirs. Um, and you leave knowing that there is a horde of demons coming out and you can still see the trail being led as you move away. This long, vast trail of um, necrotic energy that is flowing behind this helmet as you move him further and further away from this um, cemetery. Um, I will need whoever is leading this to make a survival check to see if you are able to get to the cathedral without encountering anything. While they're, uh, while they're preparing uh, I'm going to loot the body. The body is gone. Ow. There is nothing left of it. It was completely annihilated by Silas's um, divine power. It's All bad. the loot. Not know where you're going. Shall I show is, you the is, way? Uh, I, I look over at Islin and say, Rim used to be able to lead us through all kinds of wilds. I suppose I'll have to try now. And I'm going to make my survival check at the same time. Uh, just a mental note, I, as recall in a last session, I made a note that Silas was making notes and using his cartography skills as best he could as we traveled through El Terrell. So Indeed. with a 21 roll of survival, hopefully that'll get us back where we need to be. I would say so. You are able to lead everyone back. Um, the relatively safe route that you came on the way here, um, passing the area where you met uh, the dwarf, um, you still hear the sounds of battle, both from below the city and in other places in the city. Um, as you are walking again, there's another um, shake as El Terrell begins to sink even further towards the surface of Avernus, but you do arrive back at the cathedral with Uldar Ravengard. You enter, you activate the secret door that leads you down into the catacombs, and that is now where you find yourself. Nice. And as you come staggering in, wounded, tired, exhausted. Uh, Feria comes running up to you. You found him! You found him and he's got the, he's got the helmet! What's happening? What? Why? What's wrong with him? He seems quite possessed by it. He's babbling in both what I assume is celestial and abyssal. There is some type of battle taking place in his mind. He's caught between it. Need your I help, see. mage. I see. Um, well, you've come to the right place, um, obviously. Um, I can help with this, but it will require some things. We need a, a consecrated altar to Torm. Um, people have said that there is a great deal of desecration upstairs. Is that true? We've cleared some of it, but yes. Yes. What about With... the warrior? Yes, well, that will be important as well. Um, we will need to consecrate one of these um, altars. There should be enough holy water, and she gestures back towards the font of oh, water that is still flowing. There, This should be able to take care of any well, There's, uh, there's one in the other there. room. I said hmm? water. Oh, no, no, it has to be an altar. That is not an altar. Oh, we haven't um, got time for that. It's 500 demons coming. Well, I'm afraid this is the only method that I know. It's true, we must hurry. So we get water, we purify the altar, then what? Yes, and th then we will need an object that represents great um, sacrifice and, uh, and and holy power. And and I think that there can be no better option for that than, than the sword of the unknown warrior. Uh, unless you have something with you that you think would suffice other than that. 
We found it quite difficult to carry when we found it before. How do we take it? Raya can I... carry it. Yeah, oh, that's Raya right. Raya, yes, that's right, I can. We're going to need you to take it this time. I will. Yes, I will. All right, fine. Um, and uh, as uh, you're making these um, plans, uh, Einjamin comes walking over to you, Silas. Um, sorry. Uh, good to see you again. Um, I, uh, I guess you all saw a bit of action. Are you okay? And he points to the massive amount of scarring going up your arm that is now starting to throb and you feel down and reach and realize that it goes all the way up your shoulder and onto your face and you realize that half of your face has been horribly burned and is now scarred over with tissue and scabs. I look down. Surprisingly, I feel better than I have in a long time. And I... That, I, that uh, looks like... That looks like a... It looks like you made someone very angry. I think this is what happens when a pact is broken. A I deal. think you might be right about that. What would you know about that? Oh, well, a bit. Don't lose hope. There's ways out of such things. They're not easy. But you just have to find something that she wants more than your soul. If it is who I think it is. You said something. The trips of memory, an old fairy tale I've heard about a place with a well of souls. It was a cursed city. You had okay. to make a deal to get in. I think I might know what you're talking about. It's not quite like that if you're talking about young Kath. I thought it was a fairy tale. <laughs> Not a fairy tale, but it's just a place that people who make those sorts of deals can go, but you don't need to make a deal to go there. But marked like this, you might stand out a bit. I, I would recommend not looking for it, at least not yet. You were working to keep everyone safe. Has anything happened while we were gone? Um, we we sent out a few more people. Still waiting for them to come back, but um, looks like your friends have got a plan to take care of that Uldar fellow. Is there anything you need me to do? Keep watch over these people. Unless you have the ability to remove curses. Or get souls back, or... Not a, cur not a curse like that. Although, sometimes even something like that can bring its own benefits for the price. Yeah. And you realize that that side of your body actually feels a little better protected. You have a plus one natural armor bonus to your AC. However, your charisma has gone down by two. Yeah. Ow. Thought I was a paladin again. <laughs> uh, I'll look at uh, Einjman and say, so you, you seem to know a lot. Weren't you looking for a brother? Um, well, we can talk about that some other time, maybe. Have you seen any altars to Torm? I think there's one upstairs, although it was horribly desecrated. Hmm. Have you seen any priests of Torm? 
I think that that over there might be one. And he points at Pereira, who is clearly a priest of Torm. Hmm. Just keep Maybe. on guarding these people. Yes, I'm not going anywhere. And uh, Silas is looking a little bit overwhelmed, uh, like he could cry at any minute. He puts his hand out on your shoulder and says, Hey, you're still standing. You're still breathing. Huh. I'm wonderful. Good. Uh, did, Let's have take you seen 3,000 gold coins laying around anywhere? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm a little short. Um, uh. Yeah, right this way. And he motions as the rest of the group begins to bring Uldar Ravenguard through, um, moving carefully and sneakily, trying to avoid any patrolling devils or demons you recover the sword of the unknown soldier and you return upstairs moving to the altar where you encountered the um, demonic crabs Feria leads you over to it and she says all right, I can begin the ritual, but I will need at least one of you to help. While the ritual is in process, in progress, it cannot be disturbed, no matter what happens. What will this require? Prayer, sincerity of belief. And as she is explaining this to, oh crap. Oh, well, goodbye, man. Theater, theater of the mind. Unless I can bring it back somehow. Aha! Victory! Victory! Victory. Keep, it, keep it behind the curtain, guys. Nobody saw anything. There's That's nothing right. to see here. Right, right, no problems. We wasn't on the All anyway. a part of the show. All right. Um, the um, As she's explaining this, uh, you use the holy water to... Concert, reconsecrate the altar. Who will, who will pray to Torm? I will pray to Torm. He venerates holy warriors. That he does. I feel a tiny bit of divine energy too, and for effect, Silas cast a spell. Ooh. What spell does Silas cast? Protection from evil. Protection from evil. <laughs> Protection from evil. <laughs> and good. All right. So you all come to. And that would here. be on the, the priestess, but I invoke it uh, in Vandria's name. Which she says, don't, no, not, not on me. Not on me. On, no? on Uldar. On Uldar. Even better. Yes. On Uldar. Boom. Protection from evil. So you move to the altar here. Uldar kneels instinctively, instinctually in front of it, but you can see he's still not, not present, and he's still warring with whatever is in his mind. And she asks Rhea to touch the sword to the helm, which she does. And as she does, there's a wing, and you see at the point of contact, a small nimbus of light looks like it's passing between the sword and the helm. Who will pray? I will pray. Oh, great God, Tom, we ask that you recognize the power of this symbolic object which once was used to defend this city and we ask that you recognize the purity of heart of this man who is so troubled and we ask that you cast out whatever it is that is ailing him 
and she looks to you, Ryan, and she begins to concentrate, and the light that is in between the sword and the helm begins to glow and get brighter slowly. What do you say, Falcon? Torm, true and loyal fury, you who call is duty, loyalty, and righteousness. Guide this man back. Bring him to the path of the light, so that may he again serve you and be your justice in this the most darkest hour of our need. Mighty Torm, one of the three, humble servant invokes you. Roll a religion check with advantage, please, Falcon. Ooh. We're so close to a natural <laughs> twenty. So we've got a D6 before you've got D6s. Uh, oh, I've, I've got. I've got I've, but do I? I believe. I believe you do. Actually, do I have? Yes. <laughs> I, and I would certainly roll that bad boy. All right. Yes. Oh my god. Well, well also, <laughs> that's just that's a knowledge question, right? Oh, oh that was mm -hmm. terrifying. A would, knowledge question. Just, well, I was just going to say that protection from evil. If the target is already charmed, frightened, or possessed, the target has advantage on any new saving throw against the relevant effect. Indeed. So hopefully Indeed. with a little bit of bolstering. So with a 15 with Falkman's religion check, the glowing gets even larger and you all feel this wave of energy come over you. And for just the briefest moment, you feel as if you're back prime material plane walking down a street in Baldur's Gate or across the countryside and this oppression of hell that has been slowly creeping upon you for the days that you've been here is completely washed away and you feel a great sense of relief and purity as Torm's presence comes down upon this altar and bathes Uldar Ravengard. As it does, from out of the helm, two of the small balls of light that you saw going around Gideon in uh, the cemetery come out. And they begin to try to attack him. But as they move towards the light and the spell that Silas had cast, they, they can't penetrate it. And after a few moments, Feria ceases speaking and she says to Rhea, remove the sword, and she does. And as she does, the lines of necrotic energy flowing away from the helm disappear. And the two balls of light fade into nothingness. Uldar's hands drop next to his body and he's... looks up. Persephone. And that will be where we end tonight's session. <laughs>